We're rolling. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to episode 81 mm. of the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast. I'm Milton Campus. I'm a brown belt training out of South Florida. We have Bo behind the camera. Hello. Bo. Hello. Miguel riding shotgun. Right here. Shout out to Britt Tavar, our booking manager and sponsorship coordinator. Thank you for uh, for hooking up all these cool guests. Joining us today is going to be Black Belt Nick Salas. I'm oh, not yeah. going to butcher his, uh, let, let, let's see if I can do it. Tamandua. Tamandua. Nick Tamandua Salas. Okay, he's going to be joining us in just a little bit. Support for the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. Ooh. Check it out. The best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Love it. Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Men's Hygiene Bundle. It's called the Performance Package. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for our listeners. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with code JJD20. 20. 20. It's changed from JJD. It's not That JJD is not going to work mm-hmm. anymore. I've been correcting it online. Yeah, it's JJD20. It's going 20. to be jjd 20 at manscaped.com. We are also sponsored by Black Belt Digital Marketing. Anything you need to build your business, website design, Google ads, graphic design, logos, we can help. Check us out at Black Belt Digital Marketing. Thank you for the sound effects. I know, right? Uh, on IG or on uh, our website, bbdigitalmarketing.com. Request a free online review of your online presence. I'm still, it's written, it says them and there yeah. instead of we and us. I own Black Belt Digital Marketing proudly. I've got to fix that in our, in our shout that. outs. But I am very proud. You if, you, if you need some wrong. advice, you need some help, Wait, reach you out. Use, use the wrong pronouns on yourself. <laughs> Me. <laughs> yeah. Reach out I will, uh, on, uh, on at Black Belt Digital Marketing on IG and I'll answer any questions you have. We do free online reviews. It's, uh, it's really cool and I'm very proud of where we've come in just six, seven months. Yeah, I know. Shout out to Neutral Zone CBD. Hey, find your out. Neutral Zone. Yeah, they. You know, Mike, love that you like. We were on air, and you actually caught that. I, I've got to say, like, it went over my head a little bit. Like finding your Neutral Zone. He was yeah. like, "Your buddy, you, you, he got it. He was he so excited that you got it. it. He's like, you got it. You guys are getting it. You know what we're trying to do. I'm getting a whole lot so, of it. What's well, that? What they sent me? <laughs> yeah, man. I'm CBD'd like, out. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like no, I got but it's CBD really for all dude, my hands again. are feeling better because now it's been like. You know, people should know this. The CBD isn't like, oh, I took it today and it works. Yeah, you have to build. Like, you have to build it up in your system, and then it's a maintenance, yeah. ma- maintenance type of thing. I take the I'm tinctures starting to, twice I'm a day. To feel it one once in the morning, once at, at night. Yeah, uh, I definitely feel. I was talking to Bo about this before. Like, I've come to this new place of like calming myself down, and right. I feel like that's helped me. I'm like, you know, not getting overwhelmed with work or a client issue or just getting something done. I'm just like, yeah. it's okay. Don't you are doing it? You're doing it, man. Just don't worry about it. Where I used to, like, I, I obsess about getting things done quickly. Like, I wake up at 9, I want everything done right. that I have to do between 9 and 5. I want it done by 9.30. Yeah. You know, that's the way my mind works. That's so, cool. Uh, they're incredible company. They've got some really cool stuff uh, coming. Um, we are representing their uh, their sports recovery line. They yeah. have other lines. They got of, the pet of, line. They got yeah. the ladies line. I I've, uh, I gave my wife the- uh, The face they have mask. A mask. They have a face mask. Yeah. I've used the patch on my- on my injury here, yep. where I pulled my uh, my groin, but it also like hurts yeah. my belly, so I've been using it there. Uh, so I love it. I even get the roll on down here. Don't get it too close to the. I gotcha. To the family it, jewels. Yeah, but it, yeah. Oh yeah, because it all. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I I don't I haven't gone that low. You could, you could I use, don't want to go that low because I don't want to know. You could use the massage oil for that. That my, massage oil is legit. Let me tell you something. My you know jujitsu feet right. We're always in slippers yeah. and on the mats, and they get really dry. My wife actually gave me a foot massage. With the massage oil from the woman's line, they gave us some samples. Gross. And she, had, <laughs> she's always like my feet are so. Uh, she's, she's always trying G, to get bro. me to moisturize my feet right. and then put socks on and go to bed. Uh-uh. And I and I and I, I was like, you can put the massage oil on me. Let's try this CBD massage oil. And she did it, and I put on socks and I went to sleep. And my feet were nice and soft in the morning. Yeah. And uh, I told her she's got to do that for me if she wants me to get rid of these dry feet. Get, she's got to do it all the time. I give myself <laughs> hand massages with the oil, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just, I, I, at the end of like, uh, uh, training, I just do this. Isn't but. it crazy? There's, they sent us so much stuff and yeah. so many, di- like, I haven't even gotten to it all yet. Like, I'm like, 
I'm finding the things I that I like. I'm trying gym. it. Like, I don't want to just like try this and try that. Try. So like, I've been like trying different things. So like I'm on the roll on, on the bomb, that, yeah. that big, like it almost looks like a deodorant stick, yeah, like yeah. that big one. I use that one. I use the roll on and the tinctures right now. That's all I've used. No, And, and then, use the, the, and then the foot, on the... and then the foot, the massage oil. Yeah. So, Your so very cool. Sucia. Super happy. Check them out at my neutral zone on IG. And you can visit their website and get 25% off with code JJD. A quarter. At NeutralZoneCBD.com. All yeah. right? Check them out. Let them know we sent you. I know that they would appreciate your support. Your and beat, they've your... got some cool things coming. I, know. You know, your, I, your, I always your, like to leave the clip out here, right? <laughs> so I mysterious. showed you. It's it's off camera, but they've sent me some new products and, or a new product. Milton. And they got something cool. Can coming. we have a segment called Mysterious Milton? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our friend George Hernandez from Hernandez Claims. He's a public adjuster. He can help settle commercial or residential insurance claims uh, really in the state of Florida and Texas. So he's going to help. He's going to work with your insurance company on your behalf. You've got hurricane season yeah. coming. Um, you just got Texas and Florida. Yeah. Those are just two states. Yeah, the, yeah right. That was just happens. Out. Uh, call George Hernandez today and let the professionals help you get the most compensation possible from your insurance company. So, you know, something happens to your house, your roof is leaking, you know, give them a call. An insurance come claim, assess, they got your back. They're going to come out and assess the issues and they're going to work with your insurance company to get you the I don't know how insurance works. That's yeah. most people. All right. Yeah. Hernandez Claims on IG and HernandezClaims.com. You can fill out the form on their homepage and you can request a uh, uh, an appointment or a callback. Mm-hmm. Let's not forget Sean at Flow and Roll. Who? I saw the. Uh, <laughs> who's that? Who's that? Yeah, I saw the. Uh, I, we're working on the on the the rash guard. the rash guard. I know. We have the main elements done. Sean has the main elements done. I'm really loving it. I've got to show you like the heart, and it, it's really cool. Hands down, the best custom gear and no gear gear in the business. Don't believe us? Visit them on IG at Flow underscore and underscore Roll. Yeah. Check out all their custom designs. Uh, they work with academies all across the country. They have a really cool program for uh, for any academy, new or old, to get your gear with very little money down. Reach out, talk to them about the program. It, it's it's a when I saw the actual numbers, I'm like, that's it. Yeah, really, it's a ridiculously low amount to get started. Get your items, your geese, your no gi kits online. You don't have to lay out all the money. You basically kind of like it's a little bit of like a pre-order program, so your students can times, go on and buy the new stuff. Right and look, you don't have to lay out much money. I was happy to hear that some of our previous guests have reached out, and um, you know, I encourage everybody to at least check them out and find out a little bit more about the program. You're already clicking on your phone. Just yeah. click, just click a little bit more. So again, in at that flow underscore n underscore roll on IG and visit them on their website. It's flow n roll. Dot com. There's some underscores. Oh, that's right. the website. No, that's the website. Oh, I gotcha. dot com. And uh, again, you know, twenty percent off with code JJD. Yep. The OG JJD. J-J-J. J-J-J. That's the OG JJD. Right. All right. There. We're going fast because we have we have an unboxing and we have an awesome guest and we want to we don't want to keep you guys forever. All right. So hit them up with the unboxing. Thank you to the BJJ box. Oh yeah, there, BJJ box. Favorite monthly subscription box delivered to your door filled with premium jujitsu and grappling that's apparel, fun. equipment, supplements, supplies, what? snacks, and more. Uh, they find the best products in the world of jiu-jitsu and guarantee that every box will be worth more than the cost. You're going to get like like four to seven items depending on what you get. Boy, these guys, uh, yeah. they they, they uh, under-promise and over-deliver. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I, I know the website says four to seven items. It's always more. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm not going to speak for them, but it's never four items. Oh, and it's yeah. been really cool. So, code JJD10. We'll get you ten dollars off your very first order, your first box. Number one at the bjjbox.com. So let's go through the stuff. Hit me up. Oh Head. man, I've seen Toss these me. all. I've seen these yeah. all the time. They're the finger penguin, penguin fingers. Yeah, penguin that, fingers. Awesome. All, I mean, right there. I mean, I don't know the exact cost, but that's very cool. Yeah. Because I'm not training. This is yours. I'm not training right now. Yeah. I'm gonna give you these, and you talked about your hands, so I'm gonna let I do, you. Yeah, I've been using this is, them. This is yours. Yep. You let us know. We got how some. It goes. Uh, we got s- if there's more than well, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you. So, <laughs> what do we got? Uh, so this is uh, so- did you get, I'm sorry, Bo. Did you get that? Yeah. yeah. Which way am I going? This camera, penguin you fingers. Got, got Very it. cool. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. I just want to make sure it's so. It's a soap subhero, and it's called Guard Hero. It smells Can pretty you, good. Smell it? 
Yeah, it smells good. Guard Hero. Yeah, man. Right there, Beauregard. It's a new brand they're trying out. The owner's 10th Planet student. Guard Hero. And developed a good game along with a good look, soap. Look at the uh, look at the logo. Ah. The gorilla. That's that's very cool. Gorilla. America. That's right. America. American right. Gorilla. What else we got? Uh, well, we got athletic tape. Very easy to say. Very easy to <laughs> by uh, Not the, kinesiology this is, tape? Yeah, this is the monkey tape. Say kinesiology. Tape. Uh, it's kinesiology. Yep. Yeah. I hope there I'm saying it right. Yeah, monkey athletic tape. tape. This is monkey tape. The monkey tape company. Yep. Okay. Very cool. Monkey tape. That's pretty cool. There you go, Bo. I actually have... Ooh, white peach. I have tape. This is yours as well. Mm, wow. I've got, I've, got, I've, got a lot of, I've got a bunch of tape. All right. I've got a bunch of tape. I've got monkey tape. So. All right. Now we got a Zoa energy drink, zero sugar, naturally flavored. All right. Uh, Very I, cool. I'm an energy Bo? drink freak. He's an energy drink freak. Do you drink energy drinks? I just made that up. I do, I, I do a little bit. Not you. I, oh. I know you, you, you do a little bit. I do. I you know, uh, with the heart attack, I'm careful on how much I consume all at once, but I'll kind of stretch it. If I'm going to drink one, I have coffee every day. I'm going to drink one over a longer period of time, over a longer stretch. But you want to give that a taste test? Uh, right now? Not right now. No, uh, yeah, show. Gonna, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we have more show. Yeah, next show, definitely. No, no, we have more show today if you want. But go ahead. Okay. This, I'm not quite sure. This is a, this is a, a credit card uh, for the back of your phone. Yeah. I believe. Right, you're gonna put a. Is that what it says? Yeah, it's right, a phone gonna, wallet. Like, yeah, you can put a little. You can put your money back on you your put, phone. Yeah. It says it holds up Very to cool. two credit cards. It's a BJJ phone wallet. BJJ. There it's you BJJ go. On it. Very cool. Bam. Um, what else we got? I believe that's from a shirt. That's for the shirt. Yep. So we both. I I, I cheated and I took mine out. Cheater, yeah. cheater. So you get one shirt. Tony sends us two shirts. Yeah. One, you know. So it's hold so we fast. Have two different sizes. It's a hold fast gear. You got that, Bob? Yeah, nice. Oh, dude, it's, it's a tank. Cool. It's a tank. That's not a shirt. Sun's out, guns out, and Sun's says out, BJJ box. Out. So, what is it again? Hold fast. Let me yep, see. Yep, it's a hold fast. Here you go. No, no. Want, the other one. You want to see my shirt? No, but give me that. <laughs> okay. Yes, hold fast. <laughs> yeah. Holdfastfg.com. I want to give him a proper shout out. All right. Oh, dude, mine's a tank too. Let me say, uh, please say thank you. Enjoy 20% off your next purchase. Enter the code BJJ Box. All right. So, yep. you want to get some gear from Holdfast? There you Direct. go. Another 20% discount. Ready for Good. summer. That yeah. was everything? That was everything. Yeah. Very cool. I know we did that quick. Thank you to Tony from BJJ Box. He's always hooking us up with two shirts. And we get the VIP box. Yeah. And he always throws in an extra shirt for Man, us. Man, that so VIP box is legit. It's fuck. It's so you stuff. get it once a month? That kind of checks out in terms of like uh, of consumables. I mean, look what you. Yeah. That's a lot. Again, a t-shirt. Shirts are usually tank Some, or t-shirts yeah, like 20, 30 bucks. Recovery shipping. Um, Soap. Penguin fingers. A thing. I mean, you get, you get a lot of cool stuff. An energy and, drink. And an energy drink to, to test out. Yeah. But you want to give that a shot or you want to save it for another episode? I, I would like to save it for another episode. Okay, it's, do that. It's late. You can take it home and you can you can report back. Uh, no, I'll drink it on the next show. That would be okay. perfect. I'll leave it in the fridge. Okay. Very yeah. cool. So again, uh, JJD10 for $10 off your very first order, your first box at thebjjbox.com. Nice. All right? We are giving, we're going to do a giveaway if you send us your receipt. Redact any of your important information. We just need to see your name and what you ordered that, and that you used our coupon code. Manscaped, BJJ Box, Neutral any Zone. of our sponsors, Neutral Zone, any, any of our sponsors where you can go to their website, Flow and Roll. Send us a copy of your receipt. We're going to enter you into a $250 giveaway that includes our new rash guard and some other swag from either Flow and Roll, our stuff, uh, podcast, coffee mug, things like that. Send us your receipt and you're going to get thrown into that. What are we doing? We want you to support our sponsors and we're going to reward you for supporting our sponsors. You know, I always like to say, sometimes you'll see me post online. I love supporting people who are supporting the jujitsu community. Yep. You know, right? So send us your receipt. Uh, you could do that at jujitsu dummies or you could, if you want to email it, info at jujitsu dummies.com. All right. Jujitsu is so hard to spell. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get everybody? We good? Yeah, we got right? everybody. Uh, man. Yep, I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody. All right, man. Sweet. I want to jump right into the show. Let's get Nick in here, Bo. Let's do Woo. it. All right, everybody. Joining us today is Black Belt Nick Salas. How you doing, Nick? 
Good, man. Uh, uh, thank you guys for having me on. I'm excited to have this chat with you guys. No worries, man. Thank What's you for up? doing this. Um, so my process when when uh, we have a guest come on is I'm usually going to like, if you know, I follow you online, but then I really get to know you by maybe listening to some other podcast and I've got an hour drive down. So I'll listen to something and I got all giddy. I'm not going to lie. Fan um, yeah. For sure. So not, not that you're not an amazing competitor, but some of the ties that you have are people that I've talked about a ton. Jason oh, Scully. Nice. Mm-hmm. I've been watching his videos since White Belt. My coach used to fucking get so pissed. Um, so the the Marce- 50 moves in like a minute, that's, 100 moves I, in a minute. When yeah. I found those, that was like the Bible for me. I watch those to this yeah. day. I'll wake up before an open <laughs> mat on the weekend and I'll be, I'll put a coffee on. And I put those on. This is a broken, yep, this is a broken record on this podcast. He's probably <laughs> yeah. said that a hundred times. I recommend, I recommend those videos to everybody. This is what, 81? Dude, about, he's an OG yeah. when it comes yeah. to that. Yeah. Like before anyone was on the internet, Jason was putting out all that content. Now everyone's on Instagram posting technique videos and whatnot. But Jason was doing that like 10 years See, ago. I'm training cool, for like, you know? I'm, I'm going on nine years. And I've been watching him since the, I somehow found him in the beginning. Awesome. And my coach used to get so annoyed. But then he find like my coach had just opened a gym. I was like his first student and I used to bring my iPad and be like, Hey, can you show me this? And you get annoyed. And then he just started to embrace it because it gave him some like ideas to teach me. Mm. And it, I tell people, you know, just like Jason says in the videos, this isn't a detailed instructional, but it's what I needed. Like, Oh shit. Oh, when I'm there. Oh yeah. wow, man. It I didn't even gives you so know. many ideas, right? Yeah. Because he's like looking at it from so many different angles. And that's the one thing I tell people, like, I'm so lucky for like one of my first exposures to do to jujitsu was actually through Jason Scully. You yeah. know, he was like one of my first coaches in the sport. So for me, like being brought up through like his ranks, uh, it was normal for me to be really involved with the studying aspect of jujitsu and being really into like techniques and drilling and all that. So when I finally left Jason to go train elsewhere, uh, whenever uh, he closed the school to focus on internet stuff, it was kind of like a shocker to me to realize that not everyone thought that way. And that's when I really started to appreciate like how he brought me up and how he taught because it is hard to find maybe nowadays, not as much, but at the time it was really hard to find coaches that were as involved in the sport of jiu-jitsu with the educational stuff as he was. So like taking a step out of his uh, gym, it was really a shocker for me to see, like, if I want to keep following this path, I'm going to have to create my own culture because not everyone is like as studious and as like neurotic about all these techniques. And, you know, if you watch the videos, you already know he's like, he, he, he's like an encyclopedia of jiu-jitsu. So, so go back to that. How did you meet him? Like, tell us about your start in jujitsu. You said he was one of your first coach coaches or your first yeah. coach. Yeah. So like I came through like the traditional arts. So my parents put me in Taekwondo since the age of four karate, you know, I did kickboxing. Like they put me in everything to kind of expose me to a wide array of different martial arts, maybe with the intention to pique my interest in MMA. Like my dad's an old school uh, UFC fan. But I was also, you know, going through some bullying stuff. So it it kind of fit a, a bunch of different benefits for a younger kid. And so I say one of my first coaches was because I actually had like a kids MMA coach around the ages of like 12. Wow. And so that was my real first exposure to jujitsu. He would mix in like Kyokushin karate with grappling, judo, things like that. So by the time I went to Jason's school, I actually had a fair understanding of basic jujitsu. So I knew how to like scissor sweep someone, hip bump sweep, Americana, armbar, all that stuff. So he wasn't like my first jujitsu coach, but he was for sure my first coach in terms of like really investing in me and showing me the ropes through sport jujitsu. So I would say more specific to that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we've actually, we've had Jason on, we had Jason on like uh, the beginning of the pandemic and he was doing the like a like kind of a give back program, like uh, you're taking a portion of of membership fees and and like mm-hmm. giving it to gyms and like you could pick what gym you wanted to give it to. I don't know how much if you know yeah, about which that. Which is amazing. Yeah, it, it was really cool. So we had him on when he was doing that. So we got to talk about that. So, but yeah, you know, definitely like you know, big fan. It was definitely influential on my jujitsu because again, at a you know at white belt, I'm learning the basics from my coach. Sometimes it was just me and him. Yeah. And then it was just like, hey, let me show me this odd move or show me this thing here. Like, it's not detailed. I, I see the move and I know that I'm in that position, but show me how to do that the way that I'm supposed to. Yeah. So I had a lot of fun with it. And it, to, 
again, nine years later, I'm still watching those videos and, and yeah. And I feel like it's nowadays it's like, there's so many resources out there. So it's almost like every student past blue belt or purple belt are starting to become their own coaches. So it's becoming yeah. more rare that people are relying on their instructors or coaches for information. So it is interesting that you say that because that's kind of like you influencing your coach to become yeah. to fulfill that role. Right. But nowadays, like you don't, coaches don't even have to say anything. I walk onto the mat and I see my students like on AOJ or they're studying flow grappling clips. So it's, it's really cool to see the evolution of jujitsu and that, like, that's just the standard nowadays. And it's because yeah. of guys like Jason that yeah. like paved that way. You know, I, I think when I first started, I think the culture, at least my coach's culture was don't do that move. Do not do a move that you saw on YouTube and come in and hurt somebody. I mean, that was really, yeah. not, I don't want to say the excuse, but that's what people were saying at that time. Like, Oh, don't do that. Don't, you know? And it was a little bit yeah. of a joke. And I remember the memes I remember that, yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. And then you could go back even further and, and look at like people ripping apart the Gracie's for giving blue belts on, you know, Gracie university. Mm -hmm. And then COVID comes about and it's just like, gotcha. I've been doing this for years. Yeah. Like now everybody's doing <laughs> yeah. it. You're you, know, you were preparing well, for this. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think, I think it was more greed based than it was don't do that because I don't think it's a good idea based. Mm. I think it was like, so I, think I need you to come to my school and learn what I teach you mm. in order for you to do it the right way. Okay. I would say most of the time, because like you said, with the resources you have now and a dummy, and even just like, even in my school, you know, your school, everybody's got a group chat with the people that, that are your buddies. Yeah. And then the group chat is like, bro, check this move out. Bro, check this move out. <laughs> you show up 10, 15 minutes early. And you're you know, around. while the other class is doing their live roles, you know, exiting the kids or whatever before the adults class starts, you are you see three different yeah. groups in the corner doing like trying to do some Instagram highlight so, real shit to each other. From Purple Belt, I don't show yeah. up early anymore. I show oh, okay. up after the, 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 <laughs> the It's warm. always 20 minutes after class starts. <laughs> I show yeah. up after the warm-ups, you know, like I'm supposed oh, okay. to. But, you, know? you show up before. Yeah, and to to piggy, cool piggyback off that, I feel like a lot of coaches too, um, they're so insecure about what they know or don't know. Uh, from my experience, there's a lot of people who are just like, just won't say they don't know. They just won't admit uh, like yeah. that they don't know everything and it's right. impossible yeah. to know everything and i tell people that all the time like i'm a black belt in jujitsu my jujitsu but i'm still a white belt in a lot of different positions and aspects of the sport so it's like it's okay to admit you don't know something so i think like a lot of these coaches will try to restrict the flow of information so they have more control over what they can say they know or don't right. know. we kind of talked about in that just a little bit outside looking, right yeah we were kind yeah. of talking about that because you know we're, we're shooting the shit chopping it up before the podcast and and we've talked about this before. I, I I think that you're right. It's like, you know, I am, I, and I'm watching a lot of the kid, the, 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 the competition uh, videos from the kids in our, in our, at our school, which are killing it. And right everybody now. has the same exact jujitsu as my coach. You know, everybody's pulling <laughs> guard. Awesome. Everybody's like, you know, great pulling arm bars. Uh, his son does. And this is what I do. I get, you know, kind of get into a half guard and then get the lockdown and then just, you know, try to sweep or, I, I call it the banana split, right? I get their, their leg over the shoulder. And, oh, yeah. Um, and I mean, that's stuff, just right? like, yeah. that's me constantly, constantly. But that's what my coach does. He's competed in fight to win. He's done it every time. Mm -hmm. Pull guard, you know, freaking I still use sweep it. them and, they ta and they're tapping. I still, I still yeah. use it. Yeah. I've, I've, I've yeah. gone through two different schools with that move. But, you know, we, you know, we talk a little bit about, like you were saying, like we've, if I, I, in some cases, you know, I haven't had a lot of coaches, but I do know that there are coaches and we've talked about it where like they could get out of their own way and not look at it as competition to their, their yeah. jujitsu. Like I'm not going to find moves online and then just do it with my grappling dummy or get my buddy over. Oh when my, my coach realized, like I was Bro. just like, I like this move. Show me this. He kept my interest because yeah. I needed him. I yeah. still needed him to do and show me the right way to do it. I realized, you know, as an adult, maybe kids don't look at it the same way, but I realized like, I'm never going to really get this move unless I do it with somebody and they point out what I'm doing wrong. And that's right. going to come from my coach. So well, I think it's misplaced, you know, worry, jealousy, you know, like I, I think it's a bit misplaced. 100%. And I think these days, I think, especially after COVID, everybody realizes like first it's YouTube's not going anywhere. TikTok, Instagram, Reels, mm -hmm. you know, the, the content that people are putting out is just amazing. How Am many, I going to do how all many, that how stuff? Many people, how many people bought mats during the pandemic? And I did. have it at home. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Jim, half my, half my, my garage is, is now a gym. So, oh yeah. but dude, I actually have a horror story. Like one of my students, they just were traveling for a competition and they stopped in a, a gym 
And they said that the coach came out and prefaced the technique that uh, he was about to show with, I've never done this live before, but this is how it goes. Right. And when the student told me this, I was like horrified. Like I, I need the details. I was like, who is it? What gym was it? And well, I'm not going to put Does he mean blast, like he saw this move someplace well, else or online? Basically, and- essentially what you're saying, like, because you don't, you, you just admit it, like you would never do it. And it's, I would never do that. That's ridiculous. But here is a real life example of a modern day instructor saying, I just saw this basically. I'm going to show you guys. I've never done it. You know, yeah. it's not my A game, but here it is. So it, it's crazy, man. So do you have, again, something that we talked about uh, on occasion, do you have a written curriculum at your gym? Mm-hmm. Do you have something yes. planned out? This 100%. is what you're going to learn at White Belt. You need to know this stuff. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. So like uh, Danny and I, uh, he's the co-owner of Movement Art Jiu-Jitsu, the, the gym that we opened up together mm-hmm. and that I teach at uh, daily. We have a curriculum from white belt to purple belt. And basically after purple belt, we're really trying to cultivate the mindset that you can learn on your own. You can be your own coach and we're just there to guide you. So if you're a brown belt, especially like we have a lot of people who have transferred over from other gyms since we opened okay, because we're more of a a modern academy. So a lot of these uh, students that are coming from gyms with a more old school mentality, they want to, you know, they want to give our uh, product a chance, right? So they're coming Mm -hmm. over, they're training with us. And so what we tell them is like, you already have this game already laid out. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill you in curriculum, white belt to purple belt as best as we can. But our goal is once you reach brown belt, we're just going to guide you into becoming your own coach. Like we did, like Danny and I, we didn't have really like people showing us, holding our hands, like do this, do this, do this. We watch videos, we studied, we troubleshoot, we found what worked for us in the brown belt stage. So we believe that's super important for someone's development. Because if you're always relying on other people for information, you're relying for people to spoon feed you what they should be doing at all times, they be, they, they're not self-reliant and they don't develop that uh, thinking that we believe that a black belt requires to be a real black belt, right? So our curriculum is very uh, focused on just like, you know, what we would call the basics. It's a lot of guard retention. It's building your guards, organizing it based on body parts. So we have a whole curriculum for upper body guards whenever the person's leading with their upper body. So say someone grabs your pants and they're passing Toriano style. How can you apply guard retention and build your guard on the upper body? They start leading with the lower body that springs out into a whole different curriculum. And then we start chaining things together. And of course, the more advanced you are blue belt, you start learning about 50, 50, you start learning about all these sports specific positions. But like I was saying, once you're a Brown belt, we're just here to help you. So, Oh, you have a question about De La Hiva specifically. Oh, when they do this, what should you be doing? Okay, I'm going to help you for sure. But at that point, you should have in mind what your game it, uh, should be for you. And then we're just there to basically, you know, help you plug in the gaps wherever you need them. How do you handle like, uh, you know, you've got white belts, blue belts, brown belts at different points in their journey, right? Mm-hmm. How do you handle that within a, a singular class? You know, again, I know in my school, like we're all drilling the same thing, you know, regardless of, of level. And then the coach will be like, OK, he'll uh, show like maybe four or five variations of the move and it gets more advanced as he shows it. Is that something like, like you would do like, OK, white belts, I just need you to learn yeah. the first one. Right. Is that kind of something? Exactly. Is that, is that you that, handle it? You, mm-hmm, 100 percent. So I'll show up the class with a lesson plan. I'll be like, these are the four variations or four different things we're working on. And then at some point, because I'm walking around, I'm helping people with the technique. So, at, you know, as the class is going, I'm kind of gauging the progress of the overall room. So these two groups, they're still stuck on a variation. This group over here, it's they're bored. They've been doing it with ease, like for the last five minutes. So then like you bring everybody back in and like you're saying, you make that announcement. You're like, look, guys, don't, you know, don't overwhelm yourself with all the information. Be honest with yourself. If you feel like you're still trying to work out the kinks of the first variation, just stick to that. I'll still help you. But now this next part is going to be for the people that are ready to move on. And so yeah. just like you're saying, that's a really easy way to go about it. But then another way I like to structure it is like I'll have a topic, for example, De La Hiva. And I feel like that's a, a position that is so deep that you could have white belts and black belts in that class and they would both benefit from some of the the details that I'm giving. Cause especially if the class is that diverse, I'll really make sure that I'm, uh, I'm bringing home some specific details that I feel like a lot of people don't know. So it's like for a white belt, they're hearing it for the first time thinking that's how everyone plays De La Hiva. But if you're a black belt, maybe it's like, wow, I never thought about it that way. 
I don't have this detail. So now I can put it into my game. So that's another way I like to structure it as well. How do you feel about schools that, that don't actually have a curriculum like that? It's just kind of like wing it. Yeah. I guess like, again, everybody's learning the same thing at the same time. Um, I, I don't just, know. I, I mean, thoughts. I mean, you, you've been doing this way yeah. longer than us. What, what do you so, think? So I, I call those schools show and tell schools, right? And, and not necessarily that they're teaching it in this manner, but show and tell because the instructor will show up and lesson plan or not, they're just showing random moves. They're just like, all right, guys, today we're going to do the buggy choke. And no one has any idea where to fit this into their game. They don't know the context of it. Like, how should they use this? And this, for example, could be used in for any technique, like an arm bar from close guard. What is the context? What is the reaction I'm looking for to complete this move? If you just show me a move in isolation with nothing going on, how can I apply this in my rolling? Yeah. So I feel like it's where the Jason Scully videos came in for me. I'm sorry to interrupt. Exactly. Because my first school did it like that. My first Mm -hmm. school was like, he besides me bringing my iPad, he used to uh, he had the uh, Jiu Jitsu University book, right? Yeah, Jiu Jitsu University. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he, I would walk in and he'd be like this. <laughs> and I, what I'd are we working out? He's today? like, yeah, we're gonna do this today. And look, he was a new black belt. He was a new gym owner. Mm-hmm. It, it, it worked. I, you know, I feel like my, I, sometimes I go, man, I feel like my jujitsu was better back then when I was learning all this crazy shit that I don't even touch now. Cause I'm just like yeah. not practical for my body type, for my age. But it, yeah, it, it was like, it was like that. And I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, I mean, no, I, I experienced no, that, that. And that. And that's, and that's actually a valid point that, that actually reminded me, like there's two kind of mindsets when you have, when you're developing your jujitsu, right. And those two mindsets are, you can be a scrambler. Or you can structure your jujitsu so you have an answer for every reaction, right? So the scrambler is learning random moves and just inserting it and then splicing in athleticism or splicing in, you know, uh, innate uh, reactive ability, right? You get these wrestlers that have been wrestling their whole lives come in and they can basically, you know, find the gist of how to grapple and stay uh, stay alive in jujitsu because they just have that kinetic understanding. So you can be a scrambler and be very successful, but the problem with that format just showing people moves and just like leaving them to their own devices and be like figure it out uh find how this fits into your game and just like you know just scramble right uh like you're saying sometimes you feel better doing that because you know you're able to push the action pace your your cardio is probably better if you're just scrambling all the time but the problem with that is when you're a coach and you're coaching such a wide variety of people, right? So in our adult class, I have everyone from like 64 year old women to like overweight, you know, middle-aged men to 18 year olds. I, I take exception you know, to that, but go ahead. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, old, like, I identified as a 65 year old woman. <laughs> I resemble no, that. You, statement. Guys, you guys don't fit into those categories. Now, <laughs> yeah, either, either. <laughs> but it's just so complicated, right? Like all these different personalities and body types. So the best I can do as a coach is deliver information uh, packaged in such a way that it benefits everyone, regardless of your athletic background, your age. So the jujitsu we teach is the jujitsu that a 64 year old woman can apply with ease, not the jujitsu that is only going to benefit people who are explosive, who are strong. So, You know, for example, we don't show um, like wrestle ups from seated guard. All right. That's a very good example. So we will not show that in class ever. Uh, We might show it if someone asked that question, like, oh, how do you do a a single leg from seated guard? Okay, here, Mm -hmm. Billy, I'll show you that technique. But because that is a technique that will only benefit people who have a wrestling background, who are athletically gifted, uh, it just doesn't make sense to show it in a class, class setting where a lot of the people they're just gonna it's gonna go in one year out the other and they're never gonna apply it because they physically can't you know so mm-hmm. that's kind of our philosophy on that yeah so talk a little bit more about your gym i know that you open your gym like right at the beginning of covid or in the midst of of, of covid yeah tell everybody so what it, happened there and, and i guess it includes like you winning at pans right and then it kind of led to that but go ahead i'll let you i'll let you yeah, explain so So the pans, us winning at pans actually happened two months after we had opened up. So yeah, that whole experience was uh, so stress inducing. I do not recommend it to anyone, but basically uh, prior to the pandemic, I was actually an assistant instructor at the Marcelo Garcia Academy in Manhattan. And, you know, I was training daily. My goal was to be a full-time competitor and live off, you know, private lessons and teaching as much as I can. 
but the pandemic came about oh. and basically the city closed down and I'm living at my parents and there's no other options for someone who is trying to live off jujitsu at this point. No one wants private lessons because no one wants to be in contact with anybody. There's no more jujitsu tournaments there. You know, the, the options are uh, basically non-existent at this point. And so I do have like a, a, a background in biology. I do have my uh, bachelor's degree, but I didn't want to do any lab work or anything like that. I, I, I wanted to pursue jujitsu, but I, I was thinking about, it. I was like, man, you know, worst case scenario, I might have to just give up on my jujitsu dreams. So at this point, Danny and I were training every day. We're just staying sharp. So at the first chance of an opportunity, we're ready. Like we don't want to like have like a tournament show up and be like, man, we got to train for two months now. Right. We want to be just ready to jump in when everything's open up. So we're just training every day in a basement. And uh, it's funny that you had mentioned Jason Scully earlier because that was actually a huge help for us uh, being able to open up the gym. So basically, Jason hits us up to uh, teach a course on the grapplers guide. Uh, I guess that's a little plug, but it's a really good resource for people. I'm a member. Wanna, yeah. Okay. So, you know, yeah. So it's a good resource for people who do want to learn, uh, you know, outside their gym, like we were talking about, but basically, you know, we got paid to teach on the website and that was a substantial amount of money for us uh, in the case that, you know, we had to use it. And the opportunity came about because we had heard of a gym in Pennsylvania actually closing their doors down. Uh, due to COVID. So they're closing that. They were either looking to sell whatever they had inside the school, like mats and everything separately, or they were willing to sell the keys over to someone who wanted to buy the whole thing. And so because of the money we had from Grappler's Guide, it was actually a realistic option and opportunity for us. So we had uh, reached out to them. We purchased the school. And it was a really crazy time because there was no certainty at all that people would want to train jujitsu. There was no certainty at all that we'd be able to pay the bills. But we felt like for real, like, and honestly, like it felt like it was the only option we can make. It was either that or just give up on jujitsu because we weren't making money any other way. And it was really hard to train in a, in a garage, in a basement and have no goals in sight. So basically we, we purchased a gym, we opened up, we were able to uh, gather enough students to uh, put us in the green. So we had the rent covered. We weren't making anything or profiting, but we were able to keep the gym afloat. And literally two months later, or actually like, I think a couple weeks after we opened up, IBGF announced the Pan Ams. And then a couple months later, we competed. So within a couple of months of opening up, Danny and I are able to win the Brown Bell uh, Pans title. And that was huge, like for us, like under, uh, under in your terms school? of just, oh, what was that? Under your school name or under a different school name? Uh, no, we weren't under. So we were actually under uh, Roberto Jimenez's gym at the time studio. Because uh, him and Mikey were uh, had a good relationship and everything, so it just made sense. But um, it was good for the – even though we weren't under Movement Art, it was good for the Movement Art brand at that time. Yeah. Um, you know, all these different schools in PA now were aware of the quote-unquote movement that was about to happen. Yeah. That these people that just opened up, they're serious, they're, they're high level competitors, but they're also like, you know, dedicated coaches. So yeah. it was good to have that title brought home for us. Cause that really kind of, I guess, stimulated the, the marketing and the advertisement for the school. And know? being affiliated with Roberto Jimenez is not a bad thing either. Talk about your, your partner, because you, you said we won pans. Did he win as well? Did you yeah. both gold? Uh, yeah. Pans? So he, 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 he technically got the gold, uh, Uh-oh, technically. the way IBJF works. Yeah. Technically got the gold, right. Cause on paper, only one person can have first place, but it was a weird thing too, for us, like the way Alliance, uh, divided the teams. They put Danny and I on opposite Alliance teams, oh. which is not supposed to happen. If your coach is like making sure it's organized in such a way that you guys are on opposite end of the bracket. So we met each other in the semifinals, I believe. And I let them pass. So, uh, it's more of like a, we, we say it's a gold medal for movement art, but technically he got the, the gold and I got third place, but it is uh, what it okay. is. You know? like, All right. Yeah. So best case, you know, it, it, in an alternate dumb. universe where it was the best case scenario, two, we would have been two. put on opposite end of the brackets. Yeah. Oh, or wow. or if I was a little, if, if I wanted to just stay on my non-diet, I would just gone lightweight. But yeah. So, you know, so say, say, explain for, for those that don't train, explain the, you said I let him pass. That means you just kind of, is it almost like forfeiting or is that it's like, yeah, I'm not, it's, we're, we're not, we're not going to, he's automatically the winner. We just don't, we don't. Fight. Exactly. I think, uh, you know, 
especially with all the controversy going on around IBJF closeouts and things like that. For us, like we're best friends. We opened up a, a gym together. Like we were living together at the time. So it makes no sense to fight. And yep. we have this kind of like gentleman's agreement where we go back and forth. Right. So the tournament prior to that was the London Grand Slam. He let me get the first place. So it was kind of like it was a tournament that landed on him. Right. So I was like, I'll let you pass. So basically you bow out to them and they're able to continue on to the next round. I uh, think uh, Nicholas Marigali had like a really good thing to say about the closeout. Uh, cause IBJJF the, the changes, the they, changes. Yeah, so IBJJF very recently, like a couple of weeks ago, just made like a, like an Instagram post, everything post every all platforms. Like this is where we stand on closeouts. If you get caught closing out, like if there is a, a money prize, you're not going to get the money prize and this and that. And immediately Nicholas Marigali, and I'm paraphrasing, he was just like, look, jujitsu is deeper than a medal that we're paying for. And you're not really mm-hmm. taking care of the fighters. And we have these relationships mm. and we have. It's like you got to understand this community is different. It's not about I know yeah. you I know what you're trying to do and I get it, but it's like at a certain point you know you got two guys that are in the same weight class. They partners, teach partners, partners in, partner a in, in a gym, you know, and you guys you know by the by by uh, you know some logistical mistake it ended up being that they were on the same side exactly. of the bracket. It's yeah, like and there's gonna I'm be. There for it. So what do you, what do you yeah. think about those changes? I'm, I'm sure you know a little I, bit more about it than we do. Yeah, I think it's ridiculous. So. For example, the pan, we'll use the same example, the same tournament. So Danny and I are spending over thousands of dollars of our own money to fly over and compete. You're, mm-hmm. you're talking about flight, hotel, food, all these expenses, right, that come out of our own pocket as amateur athletes because jiu-jitsu is still a growing sport. And then we make it to the semifinals or the finals, and you're telling us we can't close out. For the spectators, like the spectators aren't paying the athletes. So essentially what you want is you want people to uh, create content for you for free. Yeah. And then you want to have the authority to tell them what they can do in terms of like, uh, uh, you know, finals matches and semifinals matches, which I think is ridiculous. I think at the very least, if we're paying to be there and we're not really gaining much financially from it, that at the very least, if we end up in the finals with our brother, and in a lot of cases, it's it's brothers, like the Soje brothers closed Mm -hmm. out featherweight at uh, the most recent pans at Black Belt. So you're going to make two brothers fight each other for free. Mm -hmm. And the fact that people are okay with this, it's like, it's ridiculous. That doesn't exist in any other sport. And I get it. Like people are like, oh, well, you know, uh, Serena and Venus, they like, yeah, but that's tennis. This is jujitsu. And there's, where, major, like, there's money on the line there. They're, yeah. Can, can, Ex- oh, there's millions of dollars yeah. on the line. Uh, sponsors, Nike, you, You're and stuff paying like for that. this medal at IBJJF. Yeah. Uh, so oh, you want two brothers I just to add. basically armbar each other for a couple grand. Like, that's ridiculous. You, you said the spectators as if there were, we've said there's, there's no jujitsu casuals. Okay. Who yeah. are the spectators at an IBJJF event? The people who haven't gone yet, the people who have uh-huh. already gone, the people who got dragged there because somebody's got to go, My <laughs> girlfriend. girlfriends, or, or, family or, members, cousins. Or, or the person who's teaching the person who's going. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's it. who's there. There's not Those like that spectators. one dude who's like, hey, bro, I saw on, on what's that coupon site on where you get a bunch of coupons? Like, uh, what was it? Groupon? Groupon. Yeah, Groupon. There's no Groupon to go <laughs> to see an IBJJF no, you know, dude, competition. No, it's there on isn't. YouTube or Flow Grappling, like it's right. on it's on Instagram it, and whoever of your yeah. gym you can watch your own boy get crushed. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play devil's advocate, and this is completely. Go for I, it. Yeah. I, I have no, uh, I don't really land on either side of like opinion wise because I don't compete. Mm-hmm. I've competed very little in yeah. my jujitsu career. I'm just too fucking old. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Rotolo Rot- Rot- brothers, right? They wound up yeah. like a, a year ago in event, and, and they. They yeah. were in the finals. That was for and their black belt, it, right? No. What what, 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 yeah. what, what, what event was that? What IBJJF belt. was that? I think that was world. That, that was the yeah. It was world last year. Brown belt, uh, yeah, last year. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I mean, look, the Rutolos, they've had that relationship where they've been each other's like biggest competition since yeah. they were in diapers, right? Like they grew up like having to go against each other and train with each other, which is yeah. fine. And then if they want to compete with each other at the finals of worlds, that's their. F- they're free to do that. That's I believe choice. that everyone should have the freedom to do yeah. whatever they want. However, it still doesn't make sense if you're char- – especially at Brown, but we're not winning any money, right? They had to pay a fee to even be participating at that tournament. Yeah. So you're, you're paying registration 
on top of flight hotel, like I had previously mentioned, and then you can't close out with your brother. You have to fight them. Like, I think that's, I get it. Like, uh, I get that point too. Like it's jujitsu. It's the fighting spirit. You should go for it. You should, you know, honor or whatever. But at a certain point, there's just no return on possibly injuring or hurting your, your best friend or, 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 brother right and then you could argue well you don't have to go hard and what's the point to even like then you're doing it anyway and then, and then, then the you wind place, up yeah. in a place where actually right when we spoke to to drysdale what was the uh th- there was like some lingering controversy when it that it went like really far back oh that, that um, was adcc of like mm-hmm. hey man you have a way better chance in this bracket to win so i'm gonna i'm gonna pass this by you so you get the prize money you have a yeah. better chance of yeah. getting the prize money that but they actually lot. like who, who was it was it him fighting was it Damien? Mar- it, no, it was Marcelo Garcia. I thought it was the. Oh, was and who was he fighting though? Uh, Marcelo Garcia. I think it was and Drysdale. Drysdale. Yeah, I think that. And was the I think there was something in there where it was like, well, they, they, there they was a conversation friends. about like, hey, I'm going to let you win. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I think that that's worse than saying, hey, I'm going to bow out to you versus, yes. hey, which uh, I'm going to let you win. I, I'm going to let you tap me. Or, which Milton you know. is like, you have no idea how many jiu-jitsu matches are rigged yeah like but, i'm because, not gonna in sit that, here in, and in get that scenario though in that scenario uh, in very similar scenarios like yeah. dude all the time like every event you have a couple of fixed matches they're bro- i mean but well, it's well, like let's, let's expand brothers. expand on that though is it in these situations where it's it's brother versus brother teammate versus teammate or does it go deeper than that or just like hey man we've known each other for 20 years my my son just uh, got bronchitis and I can't afford the medicine to make sure he has a nebulizer every night. Can you <laughs> you're, please? You're going deep. You're, no, that... it is it is shit like that. And then they'll yeah. be like, "Hey, they, bro, that... I got you." Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, yeah, from, your, like from your perspective, match. is that yeah. that's is that a charity what's match? Yeah. Well, I'm t- I'm talking yep. even like so. For example, at the highest level at black belt, you'll have like a division where there are multiple people from the same association. So look okay. at a team like Alliance, where sometimes they'll have four or five people in the Deep. same bracket, and a lot of those people are going against each other first, second, third round. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm not gonna point the finger and name names, point but I finger. know of cases where <laughs> I know of cases news. where <laughs> where it's they're on team. the same team, right? And one of them would rather just be allowed to pass rather than actually fight their supposed team member. These are people on it from separate academies, but the same association. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. So it, in a lot of cases, it'll be like, look, I'm not going to cream you, especially in a situation where we know that one person a lot better than the other, instead of demolishing you, how about this? You let me win by an advantage fixed match, or let me win by a couple points. I'll save you the embarrassment and I get to move on. Right. And so you, that person still keeps the, you know, the integrity of not bowing out for no reason, because yeah. this is like the earlier rounds, There's you're not getting a medal, you're, you're not benefiting from it, but uh, you aren't getting showed up by this other person. So yeah, that, yeah like, what that's would not you... as common, but what I was talking about, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, no, you're the good, other though. scenario is like the UAE uh, tournaments or the Abu Dhabi tournaments, the Gi ones that happen like more in Europe and Asia where there is a cash prize. So a lot of times people will fix matches because you're not allowed to close out. And in those cases, you fix matches and then you take the money, the cash prize from both the first, second place or second and third, whatever it is, and you kind of put it all together and split it in half. So uh, that, that's kind of what get, Drysdale, yeah. They, yeah. Drysdale of it's like, that's, okay, that happens I'll in, split. Let me, I'll take this one. We'll split it. Mm-hmm. So I play poker and that happens in poker tournaments all the time yeah. where it's like, it gets to be like the final, mm. the final five people. And then the final five people just go like, hey, first, second, and third, you know, we all just split it just to end it, you know? Or like oh, even dude, even if it's that's... even if it's heads up and it's normal. Yeah. No, this is completely normal in poker. Like, like they'll this, say really? this out loud. Oh yeah, no, no, out loud, yeah. With yeah. even tournament people there, yeah. it's completely it's normal. It's not illegal. It's not illegal. Yeah. So oh. like even second and there's like, dude, we've been here for three days. Uh, I like I got you out. I got you outmatched by like. 10, I see. It's 10 more like a stalemate decision. Yeah, yeah, and then you just go like, "Hey, I'll I'll kick you an extra seven percent of my purse if if you mm, take second, yeah, like, and then you let me." Or take, we could play for a couple. Or more we days. Could, or I'm just gonna go all in every hand. But dude, yeah. this this been going on since box. You know, this is yeah. so uh, prevalent in boxing. You know, I don't yeah. I don't even know if all those Paul uh, Logan Paul Jake Paul matches are real. I'm not gonna sit here and, and criticize them. He's an say, athlete. I'm not gonna not, deny that. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to deny that, but it happens at the highest level as he, well. He's looking at not to get into that whole conversation, but he's actually looking pretty good. And I see him; he's training MMA, so he's going to have to put up or shut up because it's going to be a different beast if he decides to get in a cage somewhere. Was, who who's the one that trained with Buhashina? The 
the, uh, the Paula uh, Costa. Yeah. No, no, oh no, yeah, you're talking about Paula Costa. That was yeah. Logan Paul, I think. Dude, he looked yeah, good in that training. But video, he's a, he's a wrestler. Yeah. He wrestled. He wrestled yeah. growing yeah. up. So, and so he's that, athletic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he's. But can you can you do that while you're getting punched and kicked in the face? I think I think they I think they both had them. They're both intelligent yeah. kids. They're both athletic. I think they intelligent. T- yeah. <laughs> I. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, rich, rich fight people, IQ, maybe fight IQ and and wrestling IQ. I don't, you know, rich people ain't dumb and dumb people ain't rich. Uh, All right, oh uh, well, to a certain extent, I, mean, I a, think I, I agree. I think their branding is they yeah. give off the impression that they're dumb, yeah. but they're very calculated yeah. with how they do things. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you know you also I, got teams I, of people around you going, hey, let's do this. But I mean, that's dude, smart it's, to it's to make sure you surround yourself okay. with people. Even if they're not, that, I'd right. rather be lucky than good. Who no, no, no listen, shit? I, uh, I've actually said I'm. St- I, I'm. Am I starting to respect this kid? Yeah, am I starting to? I think I'm like, should. I'm like, you know, he's knocking out, okay, yeah. you know, old timers. Hey, Joe, Joe, Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan so says and, that Tyrone Woodley knockout was real. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it looked. Re- I mean, I, I don't. I that shit looked fake. I don't. I don't but necessarily. I, I don't necessarily <laughs> think that any of those. <laughs> I don't necessarily think any of those fights were fixed, but I definitely think there's going to come a time where he's going to have to put up or shut up, and he keeps on putting up. He keeps on, yeah. you know, yeah. doing pretty good in these fights, and if he's legitimately going to go step into a cage. Hmm. Big up. I'd say give him respect. Yeah. I see him in one championship I think anybody, before, I, before UFC, though. I see him wherever yeah, the sure. money's at. Yeah. That's he'll true. do a, He'll do his own promotion. I, so. You know, it'll well, be the, the, the the not an octagon. It'll be like I a, hope they like don't ruin the MMA that way. It's like, okay, let's start putting off putting on these one-off MMA events. What, freak shows? Yeah. Yeah. It's an, uh, yeah. 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 Well. But speaking of one championship, I think what they're doing in terms of pushing the sport of uh, of grappling mm-hmm. uh, outside of MMA is phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, they've signed so many great athletes. They signed my one of my best friends, Mikey Musumeci, to uh, their roster. Mikey, who? He, <laughs> Mikey <kidding>. Musumeci. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do they call him? They call him. Don't they call him? Like, Tell Rigget, me more about this, Tony this guy. Vader or something like that. Is he that big guy with like yeah. the muscles like this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, no, dude. Uh, it's 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 awesome. Um, Mikey's over there competing for them. Gordon. And he had just went against Imanari and yep. yeah. literally like beautiful performance. Like he, he had like his uh, passing position and that went back, take. back and, and submitted. So, I mean, there, there, I told when he I've, trapped that arm too, but that was ridiculous. Oh, he had nothing to do. He just kept like fishing, fishing, fishing. And so, so Danny and I, we have, uh, we have a nickname for Mike and we call him Nightcrawler. So I don't know how familiar you are I, with X-Men. That's and stuff my like favorite that. X-Men. Yes. Nightcrawler is my so, favorite. All right. So after meeting Mikey like years ago for the first time, I was like, if I want a superpower, that's the one I want. Screw all the other ones. And and it, it's crazy. Like that's literally how Mikey feels when you roll with him because he'll be in front of you. And the next thing you know, he's on your back. The next thing you know, he's on the side. And it's like you can never get a hold of him because his transitions and his ability to angle and maneuver himself around obstacles is phenomenal. So, so, it's, so what's, he almost what's, has that nightcrawler effect. What's yeah. the relationship there? How did so uh, you're you're a, a black belt under Mikey, correct? Yes. Yeah. So ex, tell me, tell me, your, I mean, you can go over the journey and, and tell us quickly or however you want to yeah. tell us. But right, you started with Jason. Then where did you go? Uh, you know, you talked about uh, um, coaching yeah, at, so- at, at, at uh, Marcelo's. Give me kind of the, the timeline of where you've been and, and where you are now. Yeah. So I've always been like a student of, uh, of the sport and just always in pursuit of knowledge and, and, and trying to find people that are like-minded as well. So after Jason's, uh, I've trained with Kurt Pellegrino, I've trained with Bill Scott, John Heliotis, so many great coaches. So, uh, I've been super lucky to be exposed to so many great people and then found my way towards Marcelo when I wanted to really push my competition career to the next level, surrounding myself with other world champions and other people what that belt, want to train. What belt time. were you at when you started with, with Marcelo? So I literally made the decision to go to Marcelo's as soon as I got my Brown belt. Mm-hmm. It was a tough decision to be able to tell that to my coach at the time, but it was a decision I felt like I needed because I felt the walls kind of caving in on me. I'm like, man, I'm running out of time. I just got my Brown belt and I still feel like I'm behind eight ball. Like I need to make up for lost time. I'm not training at the level that I want to train. So it's now or never. So I kind of like, I'm, I'm, I basically like bailed the sh- on the ship, you know, I jumped off the ship. So I got my, did Brown you belt outgrow the gym though? Oh, uh, sorry. Did you that? outgrow the gym? Like you were a big fish in a little pond like that. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I outgrew the gym. Uh, technically at least I feel like there were some, 
bigger guys that gave me challenging rounds, but for the reasons that they're bigger and stronger than me, not because they're posing like these challenging problems. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to be surrounded by people who would push me, not just physically, but mentally. And so my friend Marcus had been training at Marcellus. He invited me to go and I went. And then that's where I met Danny at Marcellus as well. And that's when, that's the first piece of the puzzle, being surrounded by people who think like you. So Danny, uh, exemplifies all those qualities. He's someone who's constantly studying, constantly trying to evolve his game and figure out ways uh, to solve problems that don't rely on athleticism. And that's kind of the philosophy I like uh, to uh, to apply to my jiu-jitsu. And that's the same philosophy Mikey has. So I met Mikey through Danny and Mikey's the same way. He's just, uh, he's super passionate about jiu-jitsu, but he enjoys the problem solving aspect of jiu-jitsu and, and solving those problems without athleticism, like I just said. So it kind of just made sense. Like we all became friends and we've all stayed in touch with each other and trained with each other uh, throughout those years. And it wasn't until um, the pandemic when Marcel's uh, closed. And the so basically we were looking to get promoted at some point so that we could start competing at black belt. But unfortunately during the pandemic, Marcella had made the announcement that there was a chance that they would never reopen due to the pandemic. And at this time, Marcella had relocated to outside of the mainland. So there was no way to really like, it was really hard to believe that there was a chance for the gym to reopen. If, if you look at from our perspective and where we were at the time. So you have to remember this was before we opened up a gym, we had no money and it's like, what are we going to do? You know? So that's really when Mikey kind of stepped in and be in, and kind of filled that coach role that we were kind of yearning for at this, at this moment, like, you know, really had no option. He's kind of helping us kind of motivating us day in and day out. So we opened up the gym. Marcellus is still close. We compete at pants. Marcellus is still close. And so we kind of made the decision to leave the Marcello association and, with that decision, Mikey uh, stepped in and, and was the one to promote us to black belt. Uh, wow. The person who had been basically coaching us and teaching jujitsu all along anyway. So I feel like even though it wasn't really intentional, it was the thing that happened conveniently that made the most sense, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was like crazy how it all worked out. It couldn't have worked out any better than it did. You know, so I know like, so does Mikey have his own association? You just a black belt under him or does he have like an actual association? Because no, now no. he's at yeah, no. at Dana no, he, got, he got he got his black he's belt. He's not there anymore. He's been oh. Thailand or, or Singapore or something like that. He oh, really? he joined a different gym over there. Oh, because so he was with like Pedigo for like, he was with Pedigo, yeah. And then, he's still yeah. with Pedigo. Oh, he's still yeah. with Pedigo. Yeah. So that's yeah, like his, is that his association? Yeah. So um, at the time, so crazy that, how all that works. Uh, Mike, yeah, it's crazy. So at, at the time, Mikey promoted us. I think he was just he was either under studio. That's why we were uh, we went under studio or. Yeah, he was under studio and then he had just started representing his own like little gathering, mm -hmm. uh, like his his garage gym. I don't think anybody's so, gonna argue. Yeah. <laughs> if Mikey, Mikey moves to Michigan, gives you yeah, wants. if Mikey yeah. moves to Michigan, no, gives you a black oh, belt, I'm like, not I, I'm not uh trying to take anything away. I'm just trying to understand, understand it. I mean, so much, and, and I was kind of leading to the question because we've again talked about this on the podcast. I'm like, is this is this association system flawed or broken? Because like, oh, can't compete unless I'm competing under someone else. Like I see like Kendall Rusing, she's fighting under, Pe she's a, she's Gracie Baja. She's under yeah. Pedigo. Is this just to go over? I know she went over to like to the UK to do some fights. Yeah. Like this craziness of like, I've got to be under somebody um, to do this. Like I really can't so do an IBJJF if I'm not technically get, under somebody. Like it's just the it's strangest thing. answer. Have you ever signed up for IBJJF card? You have to have somebody sign off. That's like, all it is. As yeah. long as I print it out, I could I could literally just take the form right now, say, hey, what's your email? Send yeah. it to him. And in my next comp, I could fight under mm -hmm. his school and he, we've yeah. never met. Yeah, you could literally fight under a different name every every mm -hmm. tournament yeah. if you'd like. $35. But fee. I feel like for Mikey, and I didn't really, I really started to understand it once I met Heath in person at one of the Who's Number One events because I had went uh, to help Mikey get ready. So I was kind of like uh, his technical support. And then, Keith was there more as like the, the mentor as the, the, the coach mm -hmm. that would be in his corner. So uh, once I had met Heath and saw what the pedagogue community was like and what they represented, then I really started to understand why Mikey had made the decision to represent pedagogue. You know, it's mm -hmm. a great group of guys. They're super supportive of each other. 
Um, I just think, I just think it makes sense. I think it's, it's what any jujitsu athlete wants. They want to be a part of something. They want to feel like, uh, they're helping people and also like receiving the benefits of being part of a team. And, you know, that's kind of what we're creating with movement art. And it, it just makes sense. Like it's, it's not just an association. It's not just Gracie Baja where there's like 60 of them across the globe or even Shit, more. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, Pettig- it's yeah. Pettig- Pettig- here, one bro. gym yeah. in Mount Vernon <laughs> where Heath really invests yeah. in students. So have you it's, ever been out there? Have you trained out there with those guys at Daisy Fresh? No, no, no. You know I, I would love to one day, but I haven't. No. I, I'll tell you right now from very little experience. So I, I, I talk with, uh, I think Alejandro runs the, the Pedago, uh, uh, site. Shout out to Alejandro. The, the, um, the Instagram you mean, right? Yeah. The, yeah, Instagram, the Instagram. Yeah. And dude, they're like, they, he doesn't on know, in, he doesn't know. Yeah. He's like, he doesn't know mm-hmm. me. And I've just like, Hey man, if I ever wanted to dude, they've just like, yeah, just come on by. You yeah. know, no problem. Yeah, just dude, let us they're know. They're so nice. Yeah. yeah. You're going to get it. I mean, if numbers. you go there bringing yeah. trouble, you're going to get trouble. So it's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and they go hard, bro. Yeah. You, you know, they go American Pojada is different yeah. than a Brazilian Pojada. But yeah, but all those guys are great. You know, Spatchy, one of their purple belts who helps with the coaching. He's, mm-hmm. he's an amazing guy. Like everyone I've met on the team has been nothing but respectful towards us. Um, we've never, like, there was no talk of ever joining them, but, uh, I respect what they're doing and, uh, it makes sense. Like mm-hmm. if you know, Mikey and you know, and you understand what Pedigo stands for, it just makes sense. Laser yeah. focus. Oh, by so, the way, were you around when Mikey was like really working the Omoplata system? The what system? Omoplata. Like he was just using an Omoplata all the time. Oh, dude. Mike, Mikey is so Mikey will do whatever he wants to you whenever he wants, you know, like he chooses not to, he chooses to just take whatever you give him because yeah. uh, he, he tends to enjoy jujitsu the best when it's like that. But to be honest, like if you want someone plot it, you're getting on plot it. Yeah. <laughs> he does it to like whoever he wants. Tell me, yeah. tell me about a, your, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Finish your, no, I was just gonna say there's a video on flow grappling where he's rolling with one. Oh, of the, the, uh, the brown belt the fixed guys. my game. Oh yeah. And he was like a yeah. hundred pounds heavier than dude. Him. He was like an omoplata purgatory that yeah. whole like round instantly. I felt so bad. Tell me a little bit about your, your partner. You mentioned, uh, you know, for people that don't know, right. You, you said Danny, but introduce him properly. And also like uh, before when you, you mentioned him, I'm like, Oh, you know, let me, let me pull up Danny. So I was looking away, looking down at my computer, like to pull up his IG. And then I got to the Bolo bros podcast. So, Tell me about Danny and then tell me about uh, this podcast. Are you guys still doing that? Bolo Bros. Yeah. No, uh, Bolo Bros podcast isn't uh, – there's there's some stuff in the talks about uh, doing some more episodes. But right now it's kind of put off to the side for other projects and, and different focuses. But, yeah, we did the Bolo Bros podcast during the pandemic to kind of fill up some time in between training. And it was actually really fun, man. Like we would – host the uh, the interviews on the instagram page instagram live and we would talk to like some of the best athletes in jiu-jitsu and just kind of pick their brains about certain things so that was super fun and that's definitely something we want to pick up where we left off uh but danny what can i say like he's my best friend uh he's one of the most supportive people that i've ever had by my side he's also for our generation one of the best brown belts he had i think he won uh, nogi pans at brown belt he won gi pans at Brown Belt uh, and a bunch of other tournaments. So for sure, like one of the best competitors I've ever trained with and 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 had the pleasure of being friends with. But yeah, man, just overall great guy. Like, uh, you know, when you're opening up a gym with someone, there's a lot more that goes into uh, like being certain about that choice that it, that's outside of the realm of just talent and hard work and results, right? Like, uh, I didn't just want to be partners with him because he was such a great jujitsu athlete and because he had a good work ethic and, 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 and I would benefit from training with him. It's more his character. So what sticks out the most to me about Danny is that he's always willing to help people. He's that person that you can reach out at any time. It could be 3 a.m. in the morning. If you have a flat tire, he'll be there within 15 minutes. That's your boy. He was talking about that. Yeah. That's his his barometer. I, I tell, yeah. I say, yeah. uh, <laughs> you want to know who your friends are, if I, or if I ask you who's your best friend or who like the the people that you're closest to. I'm like, who are you calling at three at three a.m. Your car broke down, you have a flat on the side of ninety five. Who are exactly. you calling? Ninety five. And, and anywhere, that's the bro. guy. That's your ride or die I'm friend. That's your, that's He's your literally that guy. Yeah. 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 And yeah. if I'm too tired, and almost and I got money. Almost I'll, I'll call you a <laughs> <laughs> almost to the point where it's annoying because like I'll have a flight to like a tournament and it's like at five a.m. He's like. 
I'm going to pick you up and drive you. I'm like, no, dude, like just stay yeah. home. I'm going to Uber, like leave me alone. He's like, nah, no, no, man. no, I'm going to pick you up. I'm like, bro, if you pick me up, I, I'm going to be super mad. Like, <laughs> please don't, I, I, I won't tell him like where I'm going anymore or, like, or, or what time the flight is. He's that, but he's such a great guy, man. Like I'm so lucky to have him. So tell me about your first student, your very first student under, under movement. Hmm. So the very first student technically would have to be Danny's mom. That's and who I want to know about. I have to yeah, talk so, about her. Yeah. So the the real first student is Danny's mom. And and to the people who were listening previously, uh, in the in the beginning of this podcast, I had mentioned that we design a curriculum for all people, including 64-year-old women. And that's not because I chose a random age and gender. That's because we actually have a 64-year-old uh, uh, student. And uh, we call her Mama Freestyle because Danny's nickname is Danny Freestyle. Yeah, so she yeah. took up the the moniker Mama Freestyle. And dude, I I think when you when it all boils down to like how our philosophy of jiu-jitsu and our curriculum came to be, it was because of our constant exposure and teaching and mentoring of Mama Freestyle and really taking into account all the things uh, that age will bring you in terms of like, uh, you know, uh, movement is not the same, right? The strength is not the same. That goes for anybody. Like a 30 year old is not as strong or limber or fast as a 20 year old. Like it's, you know, all these things have to be taken into account when you're teaching jujitsu and when you're showing jujitsu and when you want your students to be the best version of themselves. So I think really having mama freestyle around really shaped the way we think about, we think about jujitsu and it's a blessing to have her around because to watch her on the mats every day. So I've been around a lot of people. I trained Marcellus. ourselves. I've been around a lot of high level athletes, people who would call themselves full-time jujitsu athletes. Right. And you're talking about a schedule of two times a day training, maybe two hours uh, each session, maybe even three times. Right. Mama freestyle. I kid you not is on the mat actively training, not just sitting, watching videos, not just saying they're, you know, they're on the mat, but they're really just goofing off hard work on the mat for at least six hours a day wow. and that's rolling situational sparring drilling and keep in mind this is a 64 year old woman right but i think m- mainly the reason she's able to train that much is because uh of how we do jiu-jitsu and how we're always emphasizing positional structure and and for example relying on your skeletal structure rather than your muscles so whenever you're making a grip don't yank don't engage your bicep make sure you're using your 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 bones to you know keep the structure of your grip so things like that really i feel like allow people to you know maximize their training and their sustainability on the mat otherwise you're just banged up you're sore every day and if it wasn't for her maybe there's a chance that we think that a, there's a, a limb there's a point of that that is acceptable on the mat where you can try to push your students physically but because she's such a a prominent figure in our lives there's no way we would allow that to happen you know what what rank if is she now sense. she's still a blue belt uh, she's a purple belt she's oh purple, she got purple promoted belt. nice she's the one that yeah. went viral so she, right like on ibjjf yeah so she's yeah. she's uh one of movement arts first pro belts her and this uh other uh student eric williams they both got their pro belts Does she like have an ig after we opened yeah uh she is not a social media like it's uh, she's on the uh, mat she's but, on the but, mat yeah she's training too much to be she's on instagram too much. i think her instagram is myra m-a-i-r-a fam yeah Pull it up. myra fam I one bet, word i think i oh, probably send over it to me i just want to i want to make sure i follow her sure Hey, everybody. Summer is coming. The sun is shining. We're in South Florida, so it's yeah, always shining, right? Yeah, Shirts are off. Ooh, excuse me. And your balls are smooth. <laughs> you heard that right. Your friends at Manscaped are here to make sure your beach balls are as smooth as the Floridian sand. Wow. <laughs> I love it. In summer, you want to kill some cold beers and barbecues, not kill the vibe with pubes peeking out your swim trunks. Oh. That's why Manscaped has their performance package (laughs) 4.0 to keep the party in your pants looking crisp and refreshing all summer long. Dive heads first. (laughs) Dive dive head first into summer by joining the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get ready for a hot guy summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with code JJD. 
20, 20 years. Ah, how do you fuck that up? 40. <laughs> it's JJD20. JJD20. It's now JJD20. All right. Now, I, I've got actually a really cool uh, listener testimonial, a longtime listener, Roberto Santiago, yeah. supporter on Patreon, just an all around awesome dude. Thank you, Roberto. He sent me this testimonial. It's awesome. Uh, so I'm going to read this. So I'm yeah. going to read this to everybody. All right. Good afternoon, Milton. That's me. That's you. <laughs> I ordered my first Manscaped kit by using the code JJD20 20. and received received my package this past Saturday. See attached photo. <laughs> of, I'm of scared the to open stuff? it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Although you have not requested listener testimonials, I'm sending you one anyway. You have my full permission to read my testimonial on the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast, if you wish. I was skeptical about ordering Manscaped as I doubted it could be any better than the, I'm not going to say the name because we're not supposed to, uh, the, the, the current razor that he uses on his face and down below for years. But to my surprise, the Manscaped razor is superior when it comes to keeping the family jewels looking as bright, clean, and as beautiful as if I had just been cast to perform in a high-budget adult film. <laughs> High budget. I love it, Roberto. <laughs> Thank you so much. 4K. Uh, Thanks to the gentle exfoliant 4K. and shaving gel that came with the kit, the shaving experience was smooth and even. No nicks or bumps. Sorry that I cannot submit before and after photos, but I trust <laughs> you'll take my word that Manscaped is indeed a great product. Roberto Santiago. Thank you, Roberto, <laughs> for all of that. Nice. Roberto, I nice. truly, truly mean it. I really, really appreciate all you've done for the show, and that was just awesome, man. Keep stuff, keep the stuff coming. How about man. that, we're getting, we're getting, yeah. we're getting customer <laughs> testimonials. <laughs> Testimonials. Send them in, y'all. If they're good, we'll read them. All right. Yep. Get twenty percent off and free shipping with code JJD twenty at manscape.com. This is Josh, and I got that's twenty percent off and free shipping with code JJD twenty at manscape.com. This is the summer to turn your package into the full package with Manscaped. All right. Let's back to the show. So, uh, you know, I've heard you it, you said something on a podcast that I really, really respect. And we've talked about on on this podcast a lot, which yeah. is like self-defense jiu-jitsu, competition jiu-jitsu, um, sport jiu-jitsu, whatever you want to call it. You've been very open or, or you are very open with your students when they, they come through the door, you know, about the type of jiu-jitsu that, that you teach. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because I know you have a very specific way of explaining it. Yeah, 100%. So we're so a lot of people, they talk about jujitsu in terms of like um, self-defense or as a resource for people to learn how to defend themselves. And I, I couldn't agree more. I think jujitsu can be used to help people uh, be able to defend themselves, learn skills that can save their lives. But Danny and I aren't in the business of selling self-defense. We're in the business of selling people the game of jujitsu. And it just so happens to be that if you are good enough and proficient enough at the game of jujitsu, sport jujitsu, that you will also reap the benefits of being able to defend yourself. But that isn't the priority. And the way the philosophy came about is because, you know, we both have tons of experience teaching intros at other gyms, high level academies. And there is a point where people who are there for self-defense, as soon as you cut that string and you're like, oh, now we're going to transition to sport jiu-jitsu, there's a dissonance there. And I think it's important that we're very upfront and honest to the people who come through the door from the very first day. Uh, if they're in, like, for example, we just had a, a lady come in who had like a problem altercation and she wants to learn something that's going to help defend her life. And we were very honest with her. We're like, look, if you come in here and take a class today, you're going to learn De La Hiva and, and how to bear and bowl with someone. You are not going to learn how to stop someone from grabbing you and holding you and, and someone who's going to be pulling your hairs. You know, you're not going to be learning like uh, crotch stop, cr crotch stop stomps, right? Whatever they're called or eye gouges. Master Ken. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the problem is a lot of, a lot of gyms will kind of uh, supplement the intro lesson with elements of self-defense, which I think is false advertisement. So from the very first day, they're learning sport jujitsu and, not only is this just a way to be more honest with people, but I think it's also a great marketing strategy for us because the argument for jujitsu uh, business owners is usually like, man, there's so many jujitsu gyms in the area. Like, uh, you know, this finite resource of students is running out. And I, I just think that's completely false. 
Uh, there's no reason that there can't be four jujitsu gyms side to side, you know, running successful businesses. For example, McDonald's and Burger King can be across the street from each other. Why can't we be across the street from a Gracie University school? Well, I tell you why, because our demographic of people won't be the self-defense types. They're not going to be, we're not trying to sell you a martial art that's going to save your life. We're going to sell you a game just like tennis or, you know, ping pong except the game has physical consequences. This is something Joe Rogan speaks of a lot and that I can't agree more with. There are physical consequences, but it's within the confines of uh, of a safe environment. So you you are safe with it, but you're also learning, uh, you know, the the benefits of playing this game that can lead further down the line once you're proficient enough at it, how to defend yourself. But that is not the reason we want people to sign up. We want people to feel addicted to learning. We want people to have fun playing the game uh, at first, it might be dopamine f- from the physical benefits. You're, you're, you're learning how to resist people and push people and pull people. So there are physical rewards in the mm-hmm. very beginning. But past the physical rewards, now you're like learning how to manipulate people's bodies and you're learning how to uh, overcome challenges. Now that becomes addicting. Now you're, now you're playing the game. Now, now you know how to position yourself and how to submit people and you get to a certain point, like we were talking about earlier, where you're a brown belt. Now you have so many tools. What is your identity on the mats? Oh, I'm a Baron bowler. Oh, I'm a half guard player. I'm a pressure passer. So now you can have fun even expressing yourself to a degree. And guess what? If you get in a fight with someone, you'll be fine for the most yeah. part. Wrist line. But, but yeah, but we're not, we're not trying to yeah. sell like, especially with everything that's going on nowadays. Look, you want to, you want to take up a firearms class. You, if you're a woman, have mace on you. You know for sure. Take up jujitsu, but look, it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt you to also take up Muay Thai class and all these other things. Cardio. So, uh, we really try to we really try to differentiate ourselves in that way. Do you feel? And uh, I'm going to ask an obvious question, but it's worked for you, right? You've built a business and you've built exactly. a gym, and one of the, pro- the probably one of the hardest times ever to own a, a gym or any type of fitness academy. And it's, it's worked for you. You did it on hard mode. Yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 You, Once you, know, you get through the pandemic, you, 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 you're going to be fine, basically, right? It's I was, not gonna be I was talking to my buddy about this because he started a business during the pandemic, too, um, unrelated to martial arts. And I was like, bro, it was like, it was like back in the day when you would get the new Call of Duty game and you would just like, it, there's the tutorial that would teach you how to play the game in the beginning, but you could just skip it. You'd be like, skip yeah. it, skip it. Hard mode, let's go, and then just get crushed. Oh my God. Dude, that's like throwing a white belt in with like the the world champion purple belt, like their comp. first day. Yeah, comp class. Like, yeah, just figure it out, you mm-hmm. know. But no, the but, the, yeah. the underlying thing you were saying, I really like about the message that you were giving to your students when they're coming in for one certain thing, being self defense, is that hey, look, you're gonna learn De La Hiva today, but like when you do De La Hiva against this guy, he's gonna freaking smash past that crap. And now yes. you're going to have that person on top of you. And then after about two years of that, you'll learn how to get a person yeah. from off of on top of you. So like you will get what yeah, you want it, out of it, but it's not going to be mm-hmm. this linear thing that it's like, hey, exactly. today, cross collar choke. like dang. And, and I tell them, cause we have a lot of people come in through the doors and we have that discussion and they're like, Oh, okay. Well, I'll check out the Krav Maga school up the street. But I'll be like, look, I don't care at the end of the day, you can do whatever you want. I want what's best for you as someone who's interested in martial arts and wants to take something up, but just make sure whatever you choose, you train that consistently. Cause I tell you what, if you think you're just going to go to a problem, a problem got school and take three classes and think you can defend yourself, you are greatly mistaken. Mm-hmm. In fact, it might put you in more harm than good because now you have this false sense of security that you do know how to defend yourself when yeah. you don't know anything three days. And you have people like myself who train every day. I'm on the mats most of the day, every day for the last 10 plus years. And I'm not gonna lie. If I, if I was in a situation, I would have to defend myself. I would be scared. I would have my, my heart rate would go up. I would be a little nervous. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if they have a knife. So I can't imagine, you know, telling someone that after three days they're, they're, they're fine and they can defend themselves. So I, I really try to tell those people to be careful. Um, but you're completely right. Like, you know, that's the beauty of jujitsu. It's like the, the beginning is the, is the hardest part, that learning curve in the beginning, just understanding what's happening. But once you can get past that stage, then it's, then that's when the fun begins. And that's when it becomes really addicting because of that game, 
uh, game effect. And yep. I, even if people don't realize that's what's happening, that's really what makes jujitsu addicting, right? Because you show up to class and what are you essentially doing? You're trying to level up a stat, just like an RPG game, just like RuneScape that we played like 20 years ago. I don't know if you guys play RuneScape. Oh, yeah. An example, like, you know, you you got the, the archery stat, you have the defensive stat, you know? So you're showing up to the class and you're like, man, I need to work on my side smash or my Delhiva. So that's that levels up and that's addicting when you feel that, that, that effort manifest in the round, because now you're able to apply that technique uh, successfully. Right. So there is a gaming effect, whether you're aware of it or not, that's taking place. Or when that guy always gets that move on you and be like, not today. <laughs> and then you get it, you know, cause that also sends you home, you know, the quiet ride home. After you, that one guy got that like one note, move. Radio's off. Yeah, everything's <laughs> off. You're just like, how did that happen? Not, and you go home and you study that one and then you do it and then they I go think home. everybody's had that moment. Yeah, and then, yeah. but mm-hmm. that's part of the game too. It's like, and it's not from an, anywhere with an animosity. It could be like literally like with your training partner. Like when I used to train with John, you know, John and I used to go back and forth. Yeah. Like White Belt John? Yeah, White Belt John. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, oh, yeah. Blue Belt John now. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but I mean, that's super so athletic. Funny. And I mean, I was also just like a white belt, blue belt as well. And, um, but yeah, like, and then he would learn what I was doing to what he was doing. And then it would just go back and forth. Yeah. So it's like, you have this and that's, story. And that's the arms race of it. Right. So like, yeah. that's why it's so great to be surrounded by like Danny in particular and all these other high level students that we have is cause I'll do something right, but not necessarily is that trick or is there is that new technique and to keep working. Cause I'm the way we have the environment, is that people are so excited to learn how to counter people's techniques because it is the mm. learning that they're addicted to. So it happens so quickly, you know, in other gyms, I feel like it happens more adaptively. Like it's over a longer period of time that people figure out how to position themselves to stop you from doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But man, like here, like one day people know how to counter it. Cause they'll like, after the round of like pull someone to the side and be like, Nick did this to me. How do we stop? Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and like I said, Danny, uh, he'll be drilling with me and be like, can you do that thing you did to me yesterday? And I'll be like, ah, man, now, now I'm part of the process of him learning how to beat me. So the arms race is incredible. You know, I, I love that part of jiu-jitsu. That's a good like, name for That's it. what really pushes you. Yeah. So, um, Nick, we're, we're an hour in, do you have some more time? Cause I got some listener questions that yeah, I wanted to throw at you. You're good. good you're not, you know, you don't got to run anywhere. No, I'm not in a okay. rush or anything. All right, cool, cool. So I've got, uh, I've got three good questions that I think we're going to ask. Uh, so the first one, uh, let me say first that we kind of change our system. So anybody that submitted a question, if you hear your name and we're reading your question right now, you have to message us to make sure we know that you listen to the show. You message us to claim your prize. We're, we're hey. giving them either a podcast mug, a t-shirt or so you guys know what I've been offering them. We're working on a rash guard with flow and roll, which is coming out really nice. Yeah. And I've Ooh. let them say, if you want to wait for the rash guard, it's going to be a couple of months. I'll give you the rash guard. So again, if we use your question, you have to message us on, uh, at jujitsu dummies on IG. Yep. And we'll, we'll, you know, either get something out to you, whatever you decide to pick, or you wait on the rash guard. Okay. So Stefan Mihailovic. Wow. I think I got that right. Uh, okay. So Eastern European. When learning jujitsu, do you know this guy? Because a lot of times we get friends and students of of our guests. No, do you know him? No. Okay. No, but it sounds like a, a yeah. Serbian or oh yeah, there's lo- there's uh, accent yeah. marks all over this, right? We're, so. we're, big, we're big in Denmark, by the <laughs> no, way. This, this one, this one over this, the the last letter. All right. So when learning jujitsu, do you think it's better to dive deep and systematically study or break down positions and sequences, or is it better to focus on developing an overall game? I'm asking for brown belts and under. Mm-hmm. So I think it's better to develop a better overall game in the beginning. So even till brown belt, because to be honest, I didn't know what I was doing until brown belt. So it seemed like a, a higher rank. A lot of people would say, oh, at brown belt, you're basically an expert. And I couldn't uh, disagree more with that. I feel like at brown belt, you're really just starting to learn. And that's the whole point of like saying like at brown belt, you should start being your own coach is because now you're really going to explore your own identity and figure out what it is that you're good at and what you want to specialize in. So I think it's better to uh, develop a general game. So the way I try to explain to students is that you're going to go through your game in layers. So you might buy uh, for example, a De La Hiva DVD and watch it through, right? And then all I want you to do is develop that first layer of Delahiva and then forget about it. Execute that first layer. You don't have to go too deep into it. At least you have a baseline for how to play Delahiva and it will get you 
far. It'll get, it'll get you to a certain point. Maybe you're not going to be winning worlds with it, but you will be able to implement it in your trainings to an extent, right? And now you go over back attacks or uh, mount, uh, mount submissions or uh, close guard, what, whatever you're, you're trying to work on. And the same thing, you're building that first layer. You're, bu- you're building that layer, building that layer. And then once you reach a point where you do feel like you're, you want to dive a little deeper, now you go back to the beginning. You build the second layer, the second layer. And even though this is, isn't like, the the bulk of how i personally train or, or how i organize my training i still do it time to time so for example uh when i'm studying uh, a course or a dvd i'll first watch it through because it's impossible to digest every single detail in the course unless you're going to be there writing down every single thing verbatim and then you expect to no you're not gonna be able to drill it so i'll just watch it through i'll drill whatever i've like kind of uh recorded to memory and then i'll go back and then to my surprise, I'm usually like picking up something new and learning a new detail that maybe I, I, I wasn't focused on because I was looking at the macro position. And because now I understand the macro, I can zoom into the micro and appreciate those fine details a little bit more. So I, that's what I would recommend for awesome. uh, Stefan. That's a great answer, man. All right. That so, was a really good answer. That's a great answer. <laughs> yeah. And this is one of, the, I, I, this is one of my favorite podcasts today. Black, I'm going to Black, black honest. Belt that answering. All cool. right. So we have Chris. Matiko, uh, my question for Nick is, what was the biggest game changer for your jiu-jitsu that took you to the next level? Mm. Man, that's a that's a big one. So that's like, because that's not, that's something that might cross our mind, but it, there's just so many things, right? Uh, it's hard to pinpoint exactly one, but I'll say this. I think it's super important to prioritize your library of information. So you're going to organize your game to be more reactionary in the beginning. The reason being is all of the structural concepts that are important for developing a good guard, for example, like how to frame, how to position your spine so you can't get stacked, how to pummel your legs so that every time someone passes, you're able to pummel your legs so they can't pass right? All these things uh, require that, um, how should I wear this? I'm trying to, I, I don't want it to be too wordy. I'm sure you guys can like, uh, you guys can edit stuff. No, we're not going to edit nothing. No, nope. <laughs> no, I just, we don't really, I, no, we, we record live, yeah, like, yeah. not live, live, but we, we cut yeah. as we go. Yeah. No, no, for sure. But so for me, like, understanding how to react is the most important part and you can't be reactive if you don't have the structure and all the frames and all pummels put in place so if instead of framing you're constantly chasing for grips right now you're exposing yourself to getting countered and you're going to get past so the concept would be like the rock paper scissors shoot concept if i let you throw uh first milton for example we're playing rock paper scissors shoot and i let you throw and i hold my hand back i can see if you throw scissors rock or paper right and that gives me the opportunity to counter whatever hand you throw. So it's never a fair game. I'm always putting you at a disadvantage. However, we play fair and we shoot our hands at the same time. There's a chance that you beat me 50% of the chance, right? So this is the mistake I feel like beginners make. They'll, they'll be too active in trying to race to their control points. So instead of letting the person come to them and seeing what they do, they want to jump guard or they want to get a hold of their position because they feel like the time is ticking. And if they don't get their control points first, that they're going to lose. So I think the most important part is eliminating that need to race towards your position. And you're going to do that by being more reactive. And to be reactive, you need to trust your frames. You need to trust your ability to keep the person uh, off you and prevent them from passing. When you can manage that, when you have really good guard retention, now you have all the time in the world to think about how you're going to beat them. Now you have all the time in the world to really assess how they're approaching your guard. Are they leading with the upper body? Okay, I'm going to shoot that triangle. Oh, they're leading with the lower body. Now I can go de la Hiva. But without that uh, philosophy, without that uh, framework for your jiu-jitsu, you're always going to be playing this game where there's a 50-50 shot that you succeed or they succeed in that interaction. So I know it's a little wordy. No, uh, I don't bad. think there really is a way for me to concise that or, 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 or put so that, that into like a few words. So that mindset, when you when that switch flipped for you, that was the catalyst that you th- thought brought you to the next level once you realized that? Or yeah, was it so or was it, it or was, was little... it even realizing the fact that you knew you had to be reactive first to be in a position to where you could be a sorry, it's cutting out a little bit. Oh my bad. A little bit is this me, better? Yeah. 
Remember, you're picking, the mic's picking oh, up. Oh, yeah, my bad. Uh, no, so I was saying, like, uh, the, the two ways that I was thinking about how maybe you were explaining it, what brought you to the next level, was it the fact that you realized that you needed to be reactive first and work on that and then become offensive, you know? Exactly. That's so, what it was. But, so, yeah, that's a good question. But what happens is when you become so efficient at being reactive, your reactive mindset is actually an, an offensive one. So, for example, when I play guard, I'm never chasing grips. I'm allowing you to grab my legs first. And then from you grabbing my legs, I'm able to assess and identify, okay, he grabbed double ankles. So this is the pummel I use. Oh, he went hand on hip Toriano. So this is the pummel I use. Oh, he went uh, crazy dog grips. This is the pummel I use. He went long step. This is what I do. And now off your hand, you threw scissors. I throw rock. So I throw whatever uh, answer to that problem you're posing. Mm -hmm. And now I'm offensive. So you are being offensive, yeah. you're being reactive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? But, but yeah, so it would be like a counter punch and grappling, but I feel like this is so important for anyone who's trying to develop jiu-jitsu in the beginning. Otherwise you're having 50% success rather than a hundred percent success. I would, even, I, would even, yeah, I would even, I would even, I would even call it 33% success. Cause there's always a chance where you, there's a stalemate, you know? So well, yeah, you, like in rock, paper, scissors, you could both throw scissors. And yeah, then there's no winner. exactly. Well, then there's a stalemate. Exactly. So yeah. I, I I've talked about it a lot. Like I I kind of feel like he's kind of uh, uh give explained what I've said before better than I've ever explained it, which is I let people dictate the pace. I let di people dictate where we're gonna go. Yeah. As a bigger guy, I mean I'm two forty, and most guys in my gym are a lot smaller. Even if they're younger, they're smaller. Until recently, now we have like some really monsters at the gym, but. I've usually almost always let my opponent dictate where this is going to go because it doesn't matter what I do. If I take you down, I'm perceived as a bully, right? If I, if I just take you down and I get on top of you and I use my weight, which, you know, my weight and my strength, now I'm a bully. So I just, I like, I let people dictate the pace. Where are we going to go with this? Go ahead. You go. I've literally like put my shoulder forward. Hey, just go ahead. Grab the, grab the yeah. gate. Just do it. I know what you want. Here's Good. the arm and let's get this going rather than really trying to be aggressive. Literally. And if we rolled, uh, it would be interesting because I would be applying that same mindset with you. <laughs> be standing in front I would of be each like, other going here. Take, take, take yeah. <laughs> I literally I'll, I'll begin a roll. I slap their hands and I say, you go first. Yeah. Every time I, I, like I let that, them man. go first. I know my yeah. level is not my, it's a much different level, but that's kind <laughs> of, that's the concept that, that I kind of use when I'm, when I'm rolling. So mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, it's more of the, I'm, again, trying, to get puncher, I'm you know. trying to get it over yeah. with as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> now when you're training, but I mean, what if I, I told I'm, you, yeah, but what if I told you you can get over with it faster if you let them go first? Cause now if you have the, uh, predetermined, uh, uh, Counter. reaction yeah right pre yeah predetermined counter to their action you're gonna win every time i'm like that it's with only when belts. you don't know what to do yeah it's only when you don't know what to do that you get screwed over right yeah. but that's the point so with our students all right let them go first oh you lost this is what you should have done do this now and now you can actually build your game like legos rather than hearsay or 50 50 chance like playing that. the lottery yeah. So you guys so do that? You, so like if you watch like a white belt get like he goes one hand in, one hand out and gets triangled three times in a row. Yes, you're like, hey, exactly. hey, dingbat, it's either two yep, in or rewind, two out. Do this. Exactly. You, you'll so, do that mid roll? 100%. That's awesome. Because we do a lot of situational sparring that are like quick 30 second rounds, one minute rounds. Yeah. So there's so much uh, time in between the rounds to be like, little corrections here, little corrections there, do this, do that, you know? And then after every segment of the class, we bring it in and I'm like, do you guys have any questions before we move on? And everyone usually has questions because we created the environment that people are inspired by the process of learning. They're not trying to win and beat each other. They're trying to, they're trying to win. Don't get me wrong. The, the game is fun when you yeah. win, but they understand that the only way they can win is if they know more. Right. Yeah. So exactly what you're saying. So you're it's an like arms, we're literally correcting things throughout the class. You're an arms dealer in the arms race in your own gym. <laughs> that's it, that's what I'm in business I'd be for, so man. mad. How many memes are there of like when coaches showing the defense to your move? Yeah. Yeah. And you're I like, know, I know oh. that's what I'm in business for. <laughs> and then so look, mad. I'm an open book. I show my students everything I know. I don't withhold yeah. any information because I know that I'm going to be back in the gym tomorrow and I'm going to learn things that even outdate the very things I was doing last week. Mm -hmm. So it's a constant evolution of jujitsu.
Thank you to DD214 Fightwear, gear for patriotic rollers. Visit their website, dd214bjj.com, and get 15% off your online order with code JJD. And check them out on Instagram at dd214 underscore fightwear. Thank you to Feito IT and AV, specializing in commercial and residential automation, security cameras, CCTV, POS, and more. Check them out at feitoitav.com or call 305-428-2515 and let them know the dummy sent you. Thank you to Neutral Zone CBD, a combat family-owned company that supports athletes and the people who love them. Neutral Zone strives to deliver clean CBD products for sports recovery in gummies, lotions, balms, roll-ons, and more. After a competition, a hard rolling session, or a tough day on the job, Neutral Zone has a product designed to help you reduce inflammation, increase cell rejuvenation, and may even help with aging joints. Visit NeutralZoneCBD.com and get 25% off your order with code JJD. And follow them on Instagram, too. At My Neutral Zone. Jiu Jitsu's favorite monthly subscription box has now joined the Jiu Jitsu Dummies podcast. The BJJ box is delivered to your door filled with premium Jiu Jitsu and grappling apparel, equipment, supplements, supplies, snacks, and more. The crew at the BJJ box find the best in the world of Jiu Jitsu and guarantee every box to be worth more than the cost. Each box includes four to seven items you're going to love. Visit the BJJbox.com and use code JJD10 to get $10 off your very first box. And give them a follow on Instagram at the BJJ Box. All of us here at the Jiu Jitsu Dummies would like to thank the entire crew over at Flow and Roll for their tremendous support. They're renowned for their incredible t shirt designs, and they've got something for everyone. Flow and Roll quickly rose up to become the premier custom apparel provider for academies, big or small, throughout the United States. Shoot them an email about your custom order, flowenroll at gmail.com, and they'll be more than happy to get you hooked up. Check them out on Instagram at flow underscore n underscore roll for samples of their gi and no gi kits. They conveniently offer flexible payment options too. Head over to flowenroll.com for more details, and while you're there, pick up a Jujitsu Dummy signature tee, now exclusively at flowenroll.com. And remember, you'll get 20% off your online purchase of t-shirts, rash guards, or gis with code JJD. Special thanks to George Hernandez, Claims Adjuster. Have you experienced damage in your residential or commercial property in the states of Florida or Texas from flood or fire, storms, theft and vandalism, even sinkholes, just to name a few? Don't get stressed out dealing with your insurance provider. Call George Hernandez today and let the professionals get you the most compensation possible. Visit HernandezClaims.com or call 305-712-6751 to get help now. And stay in touch with them on Instagram at HernandezClaims. All right, speed round. Speed round. Let's, Let's get into our speed a... round. So we're going to wrap it right, up now speed round. All right, so that's a problem. I thought that was a speed round. That's why I was like, man, how am I going to be concise? How no. am I going to answer? Quickly? No, no, right, no. So that was a, no, those, those oh, are listener, listener questions. questions. We were, you know, oh, okay, a, okay. as we've gone on with the podcast, I, I've gone less and less kind of scripted and okay. written questions. I, I like the listener questions because we like to get free stuff out to our uh, to our cool, people. Cool, but cool. like, I used to have like maybe twenty questions of topics. I had none. I, I, you know, I knew what I wanted to ask you, and I knew that we'd be able to elaborate on on a lot of that. Cool. This yeah. is the speed round now. So, All right, cool. uh, use uh, seven, eight questions depending on, on where we go. So, and you could uh, also answer these. Long yeah, you too. could you could elaborate. You know, sometimes these turn into another right. half hour of podcast. Yeah, sometimes I just ramble and I just keep going on. So it's a talk show. Oh, it's it's, it's, yeah. it's, this is a talk show, so it's fun. <laughs> this yeah. is the one time my mother always told me she said, you should have been a lawyer. Yeah. You left to talk. I think I found uh, my calling. Wait, 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 where's your mom? Wait, dude, you're from? Where are you from? I'm from I'm from New York. That's like a North. Well, oh, I was gonna say that's a North Jersey accent. Oh, uh, he's yeah, from so, Long Island. <laughs> so yeah, I'm from Long Island. Long Island. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Where we t- we All say right. water, coffee, mother, father. Yeah. Um, My people, bro. I'm yeah. from uh, the Jersey Shore. I, I okay. was born and raised in yeah. the Jersey Shore. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you, you don't you don't have like a real heavy Jersey accent though. GTA. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I thought I was gonna say, yeah, no, my parents are Puerto Rican, but yeah, grew up on on Long Island. You know, born in the city, moved out to Long Island. There's so, a difference. Oh yeah, there's, there's when people difference. say you're from New York, they start talking the city, and I'm like, you know, you, you know, New York's a pretty big place. It's more than just New York <laughs> yeah. City. I don't say the city. Yeah. I say you know, no, Long Island. Sure. Oh, Long Island, yeah. it's different. Okay, so speed round. We'll start with gi or no gi. What's your preference? Gi. 
Okay. Do you, do, do you have no gi classes at? Yeah, we, yeah, I train no gi like three, four times a week, and and I'm going to be competing a lot more no gi season this year. But the gi just poses so many more problems. You can't rely on athleticism the same way you can in no gi, so it does create more of that. What we were talking about that it gamifies you just a little bit more, where you have to rely on your knowledge rather than using athleticism to either evade or solve problems. Are you buying into this? Uh, like the the you know the death of of gi is around the corner. Even with a guy like think, Nike, you know, saying I'm going to compete Nogi, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think that Nogi will rise in popularity, and and that's something that uh, we saw coming like uh, a long time ago with the you know with the popularity of the UFC, MMA. Everyone knows what MMA is. It only makes sense that Nogi Jiu Jitsu will be the representative uh, of of the two. Yeah, like Jiu Jitsu will be represented through Nogi Jiu Jitsu, but I still think there's something about the Gi that is never really going to die. For example, we just had a student the other day come in and say, I want to train in the gi. And they're a white belt. Like they, they just did their research on their own on Google and found a jiu-jitsu school and they were interested in training. And we were like, oh, you sure you don't want to try no gi? They're like, no, I just want to train the gi. So I still think there's an aspect of like traditionalism or uh, there's an aspect to, uh, of, of the gi that does make people feel like they are doing something that's not like wrestling or not yeah. too... Uh, combat, sporty, you yeah. know, it, it, it's it feels more of like too. an art. It feels, yeah, it feels more of like yeah. a something akin to like yoga. It, it's like more of that demographic. People who want to do something traditional and something, uh, people who want to partake in something more of an art expression yeah. than a, a physical endeavor. And, and you, you know, do, this whole one championship thing, I, you know, I've talked so much shit about like, oh, you know, we're not going to get casual viewers because jujitsu is boring. And now like, I, I, I'm, as I'm looking at it and seeing what's happening, you know, uh, like Danielle Kelly, Mikey, all signing with one, you know, now it's, like, oh, this, this is how they can do it. And they do they mix it, it in. It, they're doing Muay Thai. Mix it in yes. with yeah, right, a Muay Thai fight. Isn't okay, that crazy? This is how it yeah. works. Yeah. So we could Dude, get those genius. viewers. And they're going to goad yeah. them. You know, they essentially go to Bouchesha. He started grappling and now he's throwing hands mm-hmm. fighting out of uh, American Top Team. Yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. know? I, I, and, and I like you, it. I'm, I'm glad I, I was proven wrong. And I'm like, I'm looking at it going, I mean, it's been happening. So I just didn't watch one championship. And then the more I'm hearing about it, we've had guests on talking yeah. about it. And I'm like, he doesn't ah, like getting punched. <laughs> I get this tell. is, exactly. but this is how you get it more mainstream and you get people that will, uh, you know, one thing I love is that it will get people that are MMA fans who are more casual fans yeah. that will go, We'll start to understand that ground game because even my dad, who's like now getting into MMA as like a Stand boxing up. dad, yeah, like oh god, they're they're hugging each other on the ground, Stand and I'm like, up. dad, you don't understand. I'm, I this is my I that's what I do. Dude, what do you yeah. mean? I'm they're hugging. I'm like, there's so yeah. much, there's so much going into the the positions and you know the jockeying for positions that that's going yeah. on there. And now I feel like okay, you mix in yeah. a jujitsu. Oh wow. Oh so let me just see the ground mm-hmm. part. Oh, that makes sense. Hey. In, in, in M- oh, okay, now I understand what they're doing in the MMA fight. So, exactly. like, and now I feel like, okay, yeah, have I was you noticed? Wrong, and I think this is this is how it happens. Have you noticed that there's no way to defend your your point on jujitsu in an MMA setting without like sounding absolutely ridiculous? What do you mean? Like, you can't defend yourself. Like, you know, when somebody's like, there's no comeback to like stand them yeah. up. You uh, can't just yeah. go like, dude, you, have you ever so, tried here? Try hold me down. Like, how, what are you going to yeah. say? That doesn't sound absolutely. Yeah. 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 Bro, I, bro you, you don't know how much PTSD you just gave me by saying that, that stand, stand them up. Like that, that's part of the reason why I won't go to Buffalo Wild Wings or any of these. Yeah. Sports <laughs> yeah dude, yeah. It, it is. It tests your patience. It's the you're free bird. It's, it's a, a guy screaming oh, free bird. Yeah. <laughs> you're, uh, you're at a jazz dude. concert and somebody. He's like, <laughs> I, that, that is true. That is true. Like, yeah. it, that's I, the equivalent. As I've trained, the longer I train now, you know, yeah. like, obviously, you know, you're like, that's no, I'm, wait, guy, I'm waiting for it to go to the ground. You oh, know, yeah. it's funny. Like, I like, like it uh, all. I respect it all. If, if they're, look, I'm even in the clinch game. Like, yeah. like we have a wall at our gym and we actually use it and the game changes, bro. When yeah. your face is against yeah, that all. wall. Or your butt is against that wall, yeah. mm-hmm. or you you get you get you know somebody wrestles up on you, and now now you're 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 fighting a wizard on that wall. Yeah. Now you understand head position, you understand mm-hmm. wizards, you yeah. understand underhooks, overhooks, you understand yeah. body momentum, you understand moves you can't even finish. You can't finish a kimura yeah. when yeah. the dude's butt is up against the wall. 
you know that's yeah. why some of the best wrestlers in mma are like the best wall wrestlers you yeah know? It's, it's very rare that you will see someone just be able to shoot shots out in the open that effectively you look at the khabibs like they're just amazing wall wrestlers they press you up against that wall they know every angle how to position themselves yeah. to take you down and that's mm-hmm. like really the part that wrestlers you know should focus on because you already have the outside shots down mm-hmm. you really want to be able to like chain those things together when the person's able to like, using uh, the wall as a weapon you know yeah. using, uh, using that cage you know, as a weapon what i feel is getting really popular right now is is the clinch game and they'll clinch they'll go to the wall but it's not the clinch game on the wall it's timing the breakaway i see now a lot of them are they're clinching and they'll time that just throw that yeah. sick oh, elbow that's nasty. Yeah. yeah they're getting and they clinch again right and yeah. then they clinch again and then, and then, and they break, then yeah. they'll shoot it then they'll change levels they'll shoot a double they'll try and get oh, under the hips you got them singing high, yeah. now they'll go low. and then they oh, go dude, low and then if you don't get the takedown they break away again they throw the one two i know i probably suck sorry for <laughs> I, don't, I just do jujitsu i'm a fan <laughs> all right so takedown or pull guard uh pull guard every time okay are you a? Are you a? I feel like I just lost so much respect no, for me every time. The way you said that, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The way you're like, okay. I, well, I was gonna give you a second to like elaborate, and yeah. it didn't feel like you were gonna elaborate, so I went, okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. I'm just gonna move on. Well, he dude, said I've every time. So much of, yeah, <laughs> I've gotten so much of that butt scooting is for pussies or whatever yeah. like uh, stigma. So it's like at this point, yeah. I just own up to it. I'm like, I'm pulling yeah. guard, bro. Yeah. You can I'm, say whatever you want. Uh, uh, I'm a guard puller, so I again, I, you know, hey. said before, I, I, it, I, there's a reason for it. Uh, I'm also getting to the age where you know I don't want to break a hip, yeah, <laughs> hurt, yeah. you know, hurt my legs, you know, do, you know, I don't know, just getting caught up, and you know, again, depending on who you're going with, are you gonna let me take you down? Like I'm gonna do a takedown. Are you gonna really fight me that hard? And then we're gonna get into like a real heavy scrap here, yeah, in a, on a mat where there's you know. 10 other groups train, you know, 10 other There's, people training. It, it gets a little sloppy. We also and then, have yeah. like a, we have a wrestling class. So it's like the guys that do the wrestling class, when we do end up matching up for whatever reason, we'll start standing up. Yeah. But like for that reason, like if somebody has zero stand up, like, yeah, you know, like, that's it. That's it. It's the really for bad. injury is so much higher when you're going yeah. against a white belt from the feet. Like if yeah. I'm going against a D1 wrestler, I feel safe. But yeah. a white belt that's just like swatting their fingers all over the place. And like when they get a hold of you, they're like flexing with all their might. I'm yeah. like, all right, I'm going to get hurt. I'm pulling guard. So like when when if anybody's listening to me going, saying anything like, oh, wow, guard pull us up, understand something. My journey's not your journey. I'm going to be 49 years old next month. I have a job. Oh, I have dude. a family. You don't a look at a yeah. day past 35. My Thank guy. you, brother. Thank you, brother. Can I good? don't. My journey is my journey. <laughs> yeah, the camera makes me look uh, ten years younger. CGI, they'll yeah. say that's that's him. He's doing active. CGI. I look, I look even younger if you're just listening to the podcast. Yeah, you're just listening to the sound. I look, Imagine even, I look way younger, oh, baby. Oh, I God. don't, um, I don't apologize for any of the things that I say. On this is my journey. I'm telling you guys about my journey, and I think that's why sometimes it resonates. And I've told yeah. you, like, one of the the most common comments I get is like, "Bro, great podcast." I feel like. This is how me and my friends are talking about jujitsu when we're sitting around wa- having a beer or watching uh, a flow match or or UFC. It's like this, and, I, and that's that's why I'm here. I'm giving you guys my journey, but I, if I'm going to talk about competing, I'm going to have a guy like you on, right. and you're going to tell me your journey, and I'm going to learn. We called it the jujitsu dummies for a couple of reasons because we like to have fun, and I wanted people to realize I don't know everything. Like, give, feed me the information, give me the info, but. Anybody that has anything bad to say about what I'm saying is like, that's my journey. I'm not trying to compete. I can't, you know, uh, uh, cut weight to go to an IBJJF. I can't travel. I've got a business. I've got a daughter about to go to college. I just yeah. bought a house. Like, hey, this is my journey. This is how mm-hmm. I use exactly. jujitsu for fitness, for self defense, and so that I don't go insane. Yeah. And, I, and I think I, that's all that matters, right? Like your listeners are going to resonate yeah. with at least one of those yeah. things and want to listen to you for that. For example, yeah. like I know lots of people that listen to Joe Rogan and they don't, they can care less about the UFC. And whenever he yeah. talks about MMA, they just kind of like zone out, yeah. but yeah. they still enjoy listening to him. Yeah. But people that are going to complain about like, Oh, Milton, whatever, like he doesn't do this or he doesn't agree with this. Like, you don't, I, I, I can't say that I had a lot of people like say that, but in the overall scheme of things, like you have people that are like, Oh, they are a guard puller. I'm a guard puller for, for the reasons I'm a guard puller. I wrestled for like two years in junior high. I got some, I got some takedowns. They're pr- probably pretty shitty. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I use cradles. 
I use cradles when I when I, I when I, I'm doing jujitsu. Yeah. I Go fucking it, love cradles. I love cradles oh, because yeah. nobody knows what the hell's going on. I put them in a cradle. I can roll them over my back and roll. Them. I just relax. I love it. It's something that's easy for me to do, but it's from that experience. So, like, you know, there's different things. I want to get you on the ground. I want to get you into my game. But at the same time, I'm also looking to not get hurt. By the way, I pulled a groin muscle three months ago, and I've been out for almost three months now. Yeah, or more. It fucking sucks. sucks. But Jonathan. again, I don't want to get hurt like that. I blew out my knee the day before we went into quarantine. The day before it was, like, officially quarantined. I blew out my knee. Like, I've been there. Great. I'm not looking to do that. I'm not looking to be on the podium Maybe I compete one day when I can retire and just focus on it completely. But this is my journey. So I'm un- un- unapologetic. Like you kind of said, like, oh, you know, if anybody out there thinks, you know, anything you about carpool. You not anybody. I don't care. Yeah, you're not losing anybody because there are plenty of people that do it. And it's your game. It's your experience. Exactly. This is what you're looking for. It's why actually the question before about, like, I love the fact that you're very honest with people. Like, this is sport jujitsu. This is what we're teaching here versus somebody who says, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Self defense. Yeah, come, come on, in, come, come on, in, come in, come on. In. Yeah, 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 yeah. Karate. Yeah, 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 yeah. And mm. I get that from a gym owner perspective. It's like they're asking for karate. They don't know what they're asking for. They think this is all karate, right? Yeah. They think this is all. Oh well, yeah, I'm learning. Oh, why am I on the ground the whole time? Jiu-jitsu. All right. yeah. Now they're addicted, but well, now you're addicted, yeah, and, and that's exactly. okay. But I respect and I really like the fact that you're you're telling people that going in because. One of the biggest problems I think is, are gyms giving people that false sense of 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 security, and I'm not just talking jujitsu. I'm talking in, in any martial art. The whole twelve year old, fifteen year old black belt drives me nuts. This world, people know what a black. Uh, when you say black belt, people automatically assume that you know how to take care of yourself. Does it? It can it. And, and now there are the anomalies, but a twelve year old with a black belt. That's what mom is walking around saying. You know, oh, you're a blue belt in jujitsu. That's cute because yeah. my son Johnny oh, at 12 is a black belt. Yeah, I I bring, hate bring that. Jo- I bring Johnny like over. I like when people are honest. <laughs> yeah, bring yeah. Johnny. Yeah, yeah. yeah, bring Johnny. I yeah. want all the smoke. I, yeah. I know. Dude, I, I don't. Hey, dude, I'm a parent, yeah. and I can't wait till that conversation crosses my street. I love. I, I I'm follow, calling it out. I have people. You know, obviously, people that I follow. I, I can think of one specifically. A girl that I went to school with, she's always posting about her son. She posted about when he got his black belt. And I looked at it, and, and I was a little, I was just like, whatever. But now I'm a little bit more like, oh, no, it's good for him. No, He's doing I think something. it is good. I hope that he finds jujitsu yeah. one day, though. I hope he goes, oh, I, I, mean, don't, you, you I didn't young know. Belt? I didn't know what I didn't, I, I didn't know. And now I'm going to try some yeah. jujitsu. And now I have stand up, I have yeah. karate, and, and, I, and I have jujitsu. And, yeah. and I think that's and, a and beautiful that's- thing. You're, you did taekwondo, yeah. you did karate, yeah. you did. That, so were yeah, you? That was me, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm a black belt in taekwondo. I'm a black belt oh, yeah. in karate. Yeah, he said that yeah. at the oh, beginning. Sure. His parents, it, and that's the thing that I'm thinking about. It's like, dude, I'm one of those parents. Like, m- my wife and I were those parents that are like, oh, my parents just stuck me in this martial art. And I've always wondered, I was like, how come I never got, you know, like, I did, I did, I did a, the parent I did a who stuck me in a martial art. Oh, dude, bit. I'm so appreciative for it, man, because like, Cool Dude, parents. martial arts is like a team effort, but it's also so many aspects of like an individual sport as well. So you have like the the responsibility of an individual athlete, but yeah. you're training with other people and you rely on working with other people. So you are building like that team, uh, like the, the things required of you to work with the team and right. how to work with other people. So it's super important. But this is giving me like uh, like PTSD with all the suffering uh, Danny and I had to go through with opening up a gym uh just as brown belts, you know, like we didn't have our black belts yet when mm-hmm. we opened up our gym. So literally having people come in, right. They're kind of just scouting out the the facility. They're getting to know the coaches and they see us with their brown belts and they're like, Oh, we're the real coaches. Or they're like, Oh, but my nephew is a black belt. Why are you guys brown belts? Or we literally <laughs> had someone come nephew. in and this, this yeah. one's hilarious. This one, this guy literally came in <laughs> Me and Danny are, are, are literally drilling for one of the, the, the biggest majors, the pans that, that we won uh, as brown belts. And we get up to introduce ourselves. And he's literally – the first question he asks, he looks at us and he's like, is this a McDojo? Really? Like, straight wow. up. Like I respect him so much for it. But like, we're like, oh, my God. We need our black belts right now. Yeah. This is horrible. But, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it sucks. I did, but the thing is, if I walked into a place and I saw two brown belts – like again, I know. Like again, that guy doesn't know what he doesn't know. Right. And and you know, I, again, I, I, I hats off to you building a gym at you know opening a gym at Brown Belt, and then building a gym during COVID, and then being honest about the the type of jujitsu that you're selling, right? The product that you're selling, and you're building it 
I think that that other schools can kind of take a little bit of a lesson from that. Like, don't you don't have to hide it. You don't have to hide what you really are. And I think people will respect you for that. And yeah, you might lose a student, but I'd rather not have the student at all. And uh, I'd rather have them yeah. not come at all than come in, yeah. waste my time and leave. 100%. Right. It's like, just be really upfront about the product you're selling. I want you to be with me for, uh, for a long time. I don't want you to come in and then be disappointed and feel like, eh, you know, you didn't, this isn't what I thought it was, yeah. you know? So, all right. So let's move on to the next question. So uh, I love this one for it's, I'm always curious and it's always surprising. Do you watch jujitsu? Are you a jujitsu fan? Will you sit home, not just studying tape, but are you watching, you know, fight to wins and, and, uh, and who's Abu number Dhabi's, one on a Friday ADCC's. night? Are you that guy? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely that guy. There's, I, I think there's just so much jujitsu nowadays that I, I tend to pick and choose what I want to watch. Yeah. There was this, uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago. It was the, the big UFC card that was going on as mm-hmm. well uh with Tony uh with Tony Ferguson and Chandler all guys. and Oliveira. Yeah, was that two weekends ago? Yeah, that was yep. two weekends ago. Yeah. It was also on that same weekend I we had Brasileros, uh we had uh yep. Atlanta open. So I was like watching Danny. I was watching what was going on in the Brasileros. And there was also King of Mats in like Abu Dhabi. So there was like three jujitsu events and MMA and I'm just like watching it all and just like over consuming all this martial arts. So I am a huge fanboy. I do enjoy watching jujitsu to this day, just for entertainment reasons, like you're saying, not even to study and, and make notes, but to actually enjoy the jujitsu. I do. But but I feel like nowadays, like, for example, Flow Grappling has this new, like, um, who's next? Or yeah. it's like a reality TV like show. The tough, like, like the, their yeah. version of Tough. Yeah. They, missed, they, yeah. missed, they missed the opportunity to call it Tug, okay. the ultimate grappler. Oh <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that would have been dope. Yeah. And plus, like, it yeah. kind of has to do with wrestling. Or this. A bit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I think he's thinking this part. <laughs> yeah. Stand him up. Oh, my God. But for example, like that, I, I'll, uh, I'll pass on because it's just like, see, it's just too much at that point. I really enjoy that. I enjoy that because mm-hmm. uh, just from like uh, uh, a and fan perspective, I do point, like right? this. Like, I would, uh, I'll take to somebody that I might not have liked, but when I see them, perfect example way back was like, I watched like the first 10 seasons of the ultimate fighter and I just started to watch the, the one this season with the girls. I'm with, current, uh, yeah. Yeah. Venezuela, uh, Venezuela and Vixen and, uh, Amanda Nunes. Uh, Amanda Nunes. Right. Yeah. So yeah. like I, I started to watch it. I think you said something and you were talking about fast forwarding to the fights. Always did it a last couple of weeks night. ago. And I'm like, I'm going to watch this one. I, I'm going to watch this one. Cause I work at, you know, I'm work from home and I could put things on in the background and, and watch stuff. But I, I am that fan. I do like to see, the background and I'll, I'll wind up liking somebody that I wouldn't have uh, otherwise liked. It's almost like listening yeah. to a song and going like, uh, but then watching the video and going, okay, I see the story and, uh, now. And there's a, yeah, yeah that's, that's like the story. Song. Yeah. Or the character them, development. Yeah. yeah. Or hear the, the singer talk about it and I go, oh wow, that's fucking deep. Yeah. And then I, I, I go just, back and I listen to it and I just and feel I like it short. So, the show yeah. could be shorter. Yeah. They, they, they're very repetitive and that's what gets me. I'm, I'm, 30 years. Like I'm it. 30 seasons deep in that show, man. Yeah. I, I, I haven't know, watched I, for a long time only because just time, life happens, it's a, it's work. A, it's a great show. Yeah. And I love what they're doing, but I, I'm 30 seasons deep in that yeah, yeah, show. Yeah. Like, I know the algorithm. I know, I know the, yeah. I know the secret sauce. They should switch it up a little bit, right? It's, it's not even that. It's just, just make it shorter, man. Just like, okay, yeah, yeah I get it. This happened to you. Yeah. You came from a tough this. Blah, blah, blah. Just say see, it once. I, see, I, I, Stop I, with the cutting. It's and like I, it's like the Ink Master shows. Is yeah, like they, exactly. they start implementing so many <laughs> yeah. new things. Like, oh, now the judge can bring someone back. Yeah. Now we're only going to eliminate one person. Oh, there's no yeah. eliminator. This it's just, they keep dragging it on. It's like, look, yeah. I just want to see who's the best. Just have just have them do it. You know, it's kind of. Like I like that. the backstory. I just don't like how. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they it stretch it yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. You got a fast forward button though, and that's what you said. You that, did, I go you know, straight so. to the end. <laughs> right. Yeah, yesterday was a uh, Kamara Usman's brother versus uh, that dude who's like half don't Native tell, American. Don't tell, don't know I'm not saying anything. I, I'm just I've saying who the first was. two episodes because they they are holding them. They are launching one one per week. It's every Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So favorite competitor to watch? Nike Moose Massey. Okay. Hey. What is your hey. ultimate goal in the world of Jiu Jitsu? Uh, I want to win worlds first and foremost. That's my dream. And then I want to also uh, create a lot of world champions uh, out of movement art. So create, create an environment that produces world champions as well. Okay. Stable man. If you could go back in time and talk to yourself 
for the very first time you stepped on the mats? Jiu-jitsu mats. Mm. What would you tell yourself? Yeah, jiu-jitsu mats. Not the Taekwondo mat. Yep. What would you tell yourself? Uh, leave. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. No. Don't yeah, do for that. real. Yeah, don't do it. Uh, dude, I, I'm, 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 I'm kind of not kidding because, dude, the amount of social pressure and the stuff that I had to go through from family members telling me that, you know, I'm wasting my time. I should get a real job just at the chance of making a living, which right now I'm making, but very like the bare minimum just to get by, you know, just to live comfortably as a jiu-jitsu person, which doesn't require a whole lot of resources. Uh, so to be honest, like, it's like one of those things, uh, what's that movie, um, where the guy goes back in time to kill himself. Um, Oh, oh, is it the Will Smith? Movie. Is it the Will Smith one where they send back the younger version? Oh, that's that's another one. Yeah, yeah. but I, I guess there's like a bunch of them. Yeah, that was a good one too. But that's what Twelve I feel monkeys. like I, I would be me. Yeah, I would I would be going back to basically kill my jiu-jitsu career. I'd be like, look, dude, <laughs> yeah, you, you're gonna make a whole lot more money. Just don't even, you know, like if I don't even know how much I love it, there there's no pain in that, right? There's no like, uh, it is what it is at that point. But yeah, I feel like it's hard, man. Uh, Obviously, I don't have that much time to list all the strife, strifes and struggles that I went through, but it's it's tough. Like when people ask me like my opinion about pursuing jiu-jitsu as a full-time job and how I can help them because I, I inspire them to do so, like can I give them any pointers? And I try to like talk them out of it, to be honest, because yeah, it, it – I'm lucky to have people around me like my girlfriend and and my parents who do support me, Mm -hmm. but I know of a lot of people who don't receive that same support and they've had loved ones leave them even because this is what they want to do. And it just doesn't match up with the other person's goals. Or I've had parents literally kick their kids out because like you're a bum, pay rent, all this and that. And so uh, there is, I actually tell the, I've I've told the story a few times. I mean, I tell, I'd say it all the time. You guys are a lot alike. (laughs) People, because people will ask me about podcasting a lot. And uh, my first, the first thing I tell them is don't do a podcast. Mm. Don't do it. Step one. Uh, but if you don't, if you're not going to take that advice and you're going to do it anyway, I'll tell you the secret sauce. I'll tell you what I did and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll absolutely help you any way I can. But the first thing I'm going to tell you is don't do it. Don't Most do podcasts it. Exactly. run about and- 12 podcasts and, and people quit because they think, well, I'm going to do a podcast and I'm going to start making money. Okay. How are you making that money? Exactly. How exactly. are people seeing your podcast? Are you advertising? What's your budget? How are you doing this? So you're gonna do it in the studio, you know? And you did, you did one, so you kind of, you kind of know. Yeah. There's a lot that goes exactly. into it, and it's not like all of a sudden people are banging down the door to give you. Oh, you're doing a podcast, and you have 35 yeah, views on your yeah. YouTube videos. Here's a thousand dollars a month. It doesn't happen. They're asking like you, what are you giving away to me for me to watch your podcast? Yeah. It's usually yeah. like, oh, what can I get out of it? So exactly. Can so, I give and, you? And, 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 I just want to no, give you. Ahead, I want to give you both yeah. something, some comforting advice. <laughs> if if no if if nobody invented a time machine to come back in time okay. and stop you to doing stop you from doing what you're doing right now, <laughs> is what you're doing really that bad? Right. All of a sudden, Milton. Yeah. From, <laughs> Milton. You made a good Milton decision. Through the door. <laughs> I don't think you'd be the man you yeah. are today if nah, you became a biologist. Yeah. Well, I mean, you are a biologist. That was my next question. Is like, what would you be doing? Which is, uh, I know you kind of mentioned it briefly, but tell everybody what you went to school for. Slang and pills, baby. Yeah, so I got my degree in biology. My concentration was molecular cell uh, biology, uh, specifically. And right before the pandemic, I was actually doing an internship at a fertility clinic. So uh, the goal, like, they gave me the option. The, The option was there after my internship if I wanted to become a junior embryologist. Uh, and work my way up. I could have done that. Yeah. Um, so that was one option, but I knew because I was at Marcelo at the time, like balancing m- my life as much as I ca- can, which just happens to be uh, not a good idea for anyone who cares about mental health. Uh, I was at Marcel and I was assisting with the classes and I was giving private. So I, I did know like deep down in my heart that jujitsu is where, uh, is what I was passionate about and where I really wanted to be. So to answer that question, yeah, it is where I'm at right now. Really all that bad. No, I, I love what I'm doing. Like I, and I can't imagine anything bringing me this much joy day in and day out, but is the 10 years or whatever of suffering worth this now? That that's another question. And I think to go off what you were saying too, is I would give myself those two options. I'd be like, look, I don't think you should do this, but if you are, let me, you know, let me shortcut I'll open the up the ball for you. you. I'm going to yes, tell you everything exactly. that I know. I, I, I really mean answer. that genuinely. I really do. 
I got to call tomorrow. Yeah. Somebody, somebody reached out to me that does a podcast right before the show. I've never met them, never spoken to them, and they run another podcast. And he's like, "Hey, do you mind if I reach out? I know what he wants to talk to me about because I saw something that he posted. Uh, so he wants to pick my brain a little bit." But Can't I'm an confirm. open book. I, and, you know, when we started the podcast, I actually had like a package on Patreon, like hundred dollars a month. We'll uh, we'll tell you, you know, we'll yeah. we'll advise you on your podcast. And then I got rid of it. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to, you know, just I, I'm happy to help. And hey, if your podcast yeah. blows up, maybe you have me on. It's like the Joe Rogan thing, right? He has yeah. All these it friends on and people other. and and then you know he the pie, the pie he's on theirs enough. they're on his you know mm-hmm. he do, very rarely does other ones but yeah. you know it's like hey we all grow together but yeah I mean it's we it is what it is but I'm definitely you know happy to give the info and you know let's see if we could do that for the jujitsu community like all the other like, podcasts like, like yeah. just go do like a. <laughs> Go do like a another. I feel like Rogan's podcast. the guy that's kind of did it anyway, even though he's not a jujitsu well, podcast. Like, yeah, but well, who cares? He's elevated this all for us, yeah. and I think people. I, and there was never a point that I was like, I want to be like Joe Rogan. It was just kind of like I want to talk about jujitsu with my friends. Oh, like, dude, you know, Joe Rogan. I, 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 I'm so thankful for him. He doesn't even know I exist, but he's influenced so many aspects of my life. Like everyone from like the people that I've been exposed to through his podcast, like Andrew Huberman, right? Because of Andrew Huberman, I, I'm, I'm more mindful of how I live my life. I'm doing cold exposure bats. You know, I'm doing all these things to help me as an athlete and for my recovery. And he, he's exposed me to so many nutritionists that shape the way that I think about food. Right. So I'm sure like you guys are going to inspire so many people. You guys probably already so- have inspired so much people, you know, and I think having a podcast is such a beautiful thing because in this day and age, the way people are consuming media is like they want to have something that they obviously want to listen to but they want to be it has to be stimulating it has to be engaging no one wants to sit down in front of a a cable television and watch a whole documentary on yeah exactly they want to pick and choose what they listen to okay uh the jiu-jitsu dummies had uh, nick salas on Uh, i heard he has really good baron bullets let me hear what he has to say and oh wow i didn't know that about him like i'm inspired by that like that's 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 all that matters you know so i think what you guys are doing is, is a super normal. Why, why are you trying to make me cry, Nick? Yeah. Why are you trying to make me cry? Well, well, it's it's on, man. <laughs> you know, I, I'm the now person I am. I am because of guys yeah. like Joe Rogan, and yeah. you guys same, are man. gonna inspire people the same way. You know, so it's I like it's so. one of those things. I, I, yeah. I hope so, and I, and I and I'm. I, the, the beauty of it is that we're having fun with it. Like we get, this is my favorite day of the week. Yeah. You know, I, I work Thursdays a lot. I work seven days a week, and Thursdays this is I'm working, but. It's the happiest I am. <laughs> Thursdays, Thursdays for the boys. I was, I was, oh, yeah. I, I'm so happy to come down here. I was here two hours early. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that, that's unusual. I'm like, yeah, I want to beat the traffic. Meanwhile, I'm just like, I just want to get yep. away from yeah. the office, get away from the computer, Dude, get out I of the could, house. You know, I, this is I fun. Really I get more. Yeah. I know. Dude, I get paid in t-shirts, to be honest with you. Uh, Manscaped. And Manscaped. BJJ Box. You're, you're box. getting paid for this? I'm CPD. No, I'm not. Well, dude, I mean, I am, because I love doing this, and I get to try out all this cool stuff. Yeah, he's he's yeah. flooded with uh, CBD. Yeah. Power power That's drinks. Awesome. <laughs> no, I got a surprise for you in that BJJ yeah, box. You nothing, get to, you bro, get to take if you it. paid me in power drinks, I'd be. I, I'd be <laughs> I know. Well, wait, you need some boxes moved? I got you, bro. All right. Dude. So let, let's yeah. go to. I'm sorry, man. Let's oh, go no, to uh, to to the second to last question, which is a kind of a, a little bit of an extension when, when we're talking about like going back and talking to yourself. Like, what would you tell yourself? Do you have any regrets? Probably not really committing to one or the other. So I, although I'm super proud of myself for finishing my bachelor's degree in biology, I do feel like it took so much time out of my jiu-jitsu career. I was just such a indecisive person and I didn't know which path I would take for a long time. So I did put uh, a, a lot of my eggs in both baskets. And I feel like although I did learn a lot from being a student in college and learning how to manage my time and learning how to uh, do both at the same time, I think I learned a lot about my determination and and my willpower being able to do both. But I do think I took a lot of time from my jiu-jitsu career, not focusing just on jiu-jitsu. So that would be my biggest regret. Um, And it's not like the worst thing in the world. Like I'm still here. I'm, I'm, I'm better for it. I'm doing the best I can with the time I have left. And I do feel like I learned a lot of things that I, I wouldn't have learned otherwise. But when you look at an athletic endeavor, right, you only have so many good years. So I'm 26 years old right now. If I just eliminated the college equation and focus full time in jujitsu, I would be where I'm at, like maybe four years ago, you know. And how that's old are you? Like how, that, we that, didn't ask you how 26. old you were. 26. 26 yeah. now. Yeah. Jeez, baby. Remember when you baby. were 26? 
I, I was just getting out of the military. I was, I was, a, I was a fucking wild man. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty close. Like I'm dude, double your age. I'm times I two. I can't believe how composed you are for 26, dude. If you would have met yeah. me at 26, you would have punched dude. me in my throat. Oh yeah, I was, bro, dude. I I'm starting to get gray hairs, dude. I lived many lives. I'm only 26, but dude, uh, you know, owning a business will do that to you. Yeah, uh, getting your bachelor's. Uh, You're doing all right, meeting. man. Yeah, keep I mean, going. It, it's crazy. Uh, again, you. I, I, you know, not to sound like a broken record, we do these questions like this on purpose because we we like to get, you know, we want to make sure that we're asking a lot of our guests the same thing, get the different take, and and you know, based on their journey. I was uh, gonna but, say, bro, I'm failing you with these quick fire answers. No, <laughs> not at all. Not quick fire. Not at all. Not yeah. at all. I mean, I, I, I think I'm gonna stop calling them, you know, speed round because we have to have a better name for them have, because uh, I, I love to elaborate on. We, we could do a whole podcast just on. On these eight nine questions, you know, it could just be the um, the interview round, you know, or something like that. The deep dive. Oh, oh so we'll, I we'll was going to say, look, we'll if, come, we'll circle back. See, like you, you kind of <laughs> oh, yeah. said, you, you kind of said something in that answer. If it wasn't for everything that happened, you wouldn't be here right now. You might not have met Danny. You might not open the gym. Right. You might not have have done a lot yeah. of things you have. Like it, if if I think if you're a good person. This was the road. This was, it had to be this way for you to be yeah. here. If it wasn't this way, you'd be someplace else. Maybe you got hurt when you were younger, or you didn't. Yeah. You didn't take to jujitsu. You just said the discipline of school has helped you. You could have burned yourself out. Yeah, like it, it would be a different yeah. story. So it's like it had to be this. But again, I think if you're a good person, you put out good energy. I think that the universe kind of takes care of those people, and it says like this is this is supposed to be your path. And and look, you never know. Like maybe you go back to to em- embryology. You know, wh- whatever. What yeah. you, like maybe that comes That's back. A safety net, you know? man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you, might, like, no. you might, but but it's there, yeah. and you, you, just, you just it, never man. know. It's it's like there, and and look, it, it made you the person you are, and you're here. Go ahead and hit him with the last question. You know, right, that's a very important question. But that, that's actually that was actually accurate. There's a machine called Ixi. Huh? Uh, it, it's literally like that, like two needles. You're like shooting like sperm into a yeah. into an egg to fertilize. My, and stuff. my wife was like a that. my wife was a surrogate. He said, he's, "Oh, okay. yeah. oh, so you know." Okay, yeah, I was I've like, been, dude, I've been through the he, process. How did he coincidentally know? It was a coincidence. Like, I, oh, okay. I shot my wife up with some. The so did she actually have a baby for somebody else? She did. Yeah, for a couple up oh, in. Uh, wow! Yeah. Holy shit! I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, so you were there for the. Yeah, I was there, there for, for the, the whole, extraction. The, everything. Yeah. I was there for yeah. everything. Wow. I was there for the birth. Was that before or after your I dragged, kids? Like- I, I dragged uh, I dragged the guy in the room. I was like, you got to watch this. So Because he so, didn't want to watch uh, it. Hold on. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. So is this before or after your children? After. After yeah, your- I, I've already had my, my two children, and then and then she chose. So this is basically like she's the oven for somebody else's that is egg yeah, sperm. It's, no, not, it's not her mm-hmm, DNA. No. It's, that ain't free, grew- baby. You make you see my kids. Yeah. You see how cute those kids are. Yeah. We, don't give, we don't give those away. That, that's expensive. Those yeah. are expensive eggs, right there. I have I have a lot. Of, I have an all new uh, an all new respect for you and your wife. I dude, think my, that's my awesome. My wife's a G, dude. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. Wow, that's like She's a awesome. Man. That's oh yes, wow. It was. Well, it was like, talk I'll, about I'll, that I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the story. Okay. Uh, yeah, afterwards, yeah. yeah. All right. So hit him with the last question. Go ahead. All right. Especially since he's a gi player, do you or do you not wash your jujitsu belt? Oh man, you're hitting me with the real, real now. Yeah, yeah. this is it. No, I mean, so this is I, people I, waited two hours to hear you talk about. This is where this. I, this is where my my career dies. Right? <laughs> no, so I, I should probably wash them more, but in reality, I have like five black belts that I rotate through. So probably at the rate that I do wash them, it equals out like uh like once a week because I have five belts and I'll rotate through them. So yeah, like I'm washing them maybe every other week. Do you have a yeah, favorite? Belt washer, yeah, that's yeah. good. Why, why? Why did you say yeah. like that's you? Yeah, like you were did. embarrassed by the answer? What? No, because you know, because some people are like, if you don't wash it, like with your, because I wash my gi after every use. You know, yeah. everyone yeah. does. But uh, not my everyone. Belt, I don't. <laughs> not, everyone. Not, not everyone. Not everyone. Always the the stinky gi guy, right? <laughs> yeah. Mother Except fuck. the stinky gi person. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I feel like the belt is just because you're gonna wear. So there's this like obsession in martial arts about like a faded looking belt, but I feel like it's the option you do. You want like a nice crisp. That's what I'm belt. saying. I, yeah. Buy that looks nice. Belt. And yeah. And, and so at the rate that I'm training at, you know, I need as many belts as I can. And also I don't want to fade out like all my belts. So my first belt that Mikey gave us the Moya brand one, it's literally about to fade to like uh, a light gray and white. And so, like, I'm like trying not to use it as much. I don't want to wash it as much because I want to preserve what that belt means to Might me. Be time so that to, one to is a different that case. One in a, yeah, maybe I'll retire in a, in a but, case. Uh, you know, 
Yeah. You yeah. And, you yeah. I want to preserve it. Like yeah. No, I think that's actually a good idea. I never thought of that. Uh, uh, thank you, bro. Yeah. I'm going to do that. But yeah, I try to wash them uh, as much as possible, but definitely not after every session. Uh, I'll leave it out to dry and then I'll use that one like you know, maybe five sessions or four sessions down the line. That's, good, you're about only, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, they only get used a couple washed. times before they get washed. Yeah. So it's not a big so deal. As far the as the belt, belt, I'm looking forward to, I've seen this one. This is how I think I'm going to put my belts is you just wrap them in a circle. You can put them like in yeah. a, in a, mm. like a frame. Yeah. But you, you just wrap them. So mm -hmm. it's the white belt in the middle, then the blue, you know, and it just wraps around that's and then the cool. black kind of is around the outside. I got it. I have a different idea. I have, I have two blue belts. Is yeah. it like the only is I've I've saved two blue belts. Um I the one that my first coach gave me and then when I went to Felipe's I I think I think I got a I got a no no, I got a blue belt from my coach and then I bought one. Yeah. But they both mm. have special meaning to me cuz he gave me one and then he told me to go buy the other one. Yeah. So I still like I even he gave me like a red stripe because I was helping coach and right. they, they, uh, that whole two years of my life, there's it doesn't matter to me. It just means something. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got you know I got the kids. Um, I have a stairwell and it's drywall stairwell all the way up, and I, I'm probably gonna sat down. You talk about losing some audience. So you ever watch the movie uh, Twilight? Yep. So yeah. It's so in their in their house when you walk up the stairs, it's like a giant joke because they're they've lived forever. That when yeah. you walk up the stairs, it's all the graduation caps because they've graduated high school oh. thousands oh, of times. <laughs> so it's all the different ones. I never so, noticed that. So what I want to do? Yeah, is, well, only he would know this. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. I'm a straight male. So yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I'm no, kidding. That, that's crazy. I'm and kidding. So what I want to do is I want to grab my kids' belts and my belts and just my my stairwell is really tall because it goes second floor. Yeah. I just want to like literally hang them straight. But yeah. just all Dude, next to each other. Dope. Yeah, yeah. So they're just dangling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a great. That's actually a really cool idea. Yeah. Because my my parents just like, oh, Taekwondo black belt, cool. All right, next. Yeah. My mother would be like that, <laughs> like, I, hey, do you want yeah. me to throw this out? I'm going to give it away. I'm donating yeah. it. Do, we, what, yeah, do you yeah. want this? Do you want this thing? Yeah. All right. So yeah, that'd be really cool, uh, Nick. Uh, I'm gonna first. I'm gonna say, remember, don't hang up. We're gonna come take take some pictures by the TV when we say goodbye. Oh, cool. But I want to give you a second to shout out anybody you want to shout out if you have sponsors. any sponsors. This is your time. Somebody you Go want ahead. to be your sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, monster Energy. Uh, monster shout energy. out to, <laughs> right, uh, Diet Pepsi. Uh, no, but uh, shout out to Moya Brand for uh, supplying me with all my gi and, and, and my gear that, you know, keeps me going. Um, I wouldn't be able to afford all the geese that I need to go through right. uh, training as much as I do if it wasn't for them. So they really helped me out uh, by uh, sponsoring me with the geese. Uh, then I just want to give a quick shout out to like my friends and family, you know, Danny, uh, my girlfriend, Amina, uh, she just moved to PA to uh, live with me. So that, that means a lot to me. Oh to have boy. People that are willing to sacrifice. Shit's getting real. Yeah. Things are getting real. So nice. I want to give her a shout out. I want to give my family a shout out. My mom, my dad, my sister, they've always been supportive. So I, I'm, I'm super lucky, man. Like all things aside, like, even though I, I did confront a lot of resistance, with my lifestyle and with certain decisions, like my close uh, knit uh, uh, network, my immediate family, my girlfriend and Danny, like they've been nothing but supportive to me. So that's, uh, dope. that's awesome. Shout out to them. I'm waiting for All somebody right. to fucking drop us like a, a Snoop Dogg. Yeah. I want to thank me. Mm -hmm. Me, me for never giving me. up on myself. <laughs> All right. I want, I want somebody to drop <laughs> yeah. one of those on us one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be dope. All right, that'd brother. Listen, this is I I am I'm, I'm not blowing any smoke up your ass. This is one of my favorite podcasts. You, you this has been super fun. You, you have a, a, a unique perspective on jujitsu. He, he said it before, like you think I, I think the same way in a lot of things. Yeah. Like, hey guys, let's not take this so fucking seriously. Like, tell people what jujitsu is and and just the way the the honesty behind what that's just how I am. I'm like, I rather yeah, and be super honest than disappoint you later. If, and, and and I don't know. I I, I, I had enjoy uh, talking to you, man. Thank you very much. And likewise, like I had so much fun being on this podcast, guys. Like, uh, hands down, my favorite podcast so far. <laughs> I really no for real. Like I feel Thank like you. I've known you guys you. forever. Like we're we're just like you know uh, just talking, having fun. And, I appreciate and I enjoy it, man. Talking jujitsu with you guys. We have jujitsu. So we have jujitsu in common. Guys. We could all relate. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, don't hang up. We're going to come take some pictures, but thank you for doing this, man. I appreciate oh, it, man. Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you to Neutral Zone CBD, a combat family-owned company that supports athletes and the people who love them. Neutral Zone strives to deliver clean CBD products for sports recovery in gummies, lotions, balms, roll-ons, and more. 
After a competition, a hard rolling session, or a tough day on the job, Neutral Zone has a product designed to help you reduce inflammation, increase cell rejuvenation, and may even help with aging joints. Visit NeutralZoneCBD.com and get 25% off your order with code JJD. And follow them on Instagram too, at MyNeutralZone. Jiu-Jitsu's favorite monthly subscription box has now joined the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast. The BJJ box is delivered to your door filled with premium jiu-jitsu and grappling apparel, equipment, supplements, supplies, snacks, and more. The crew at the BJJ box find the best in the world of jiu-jitsu and guarantee every box to be worth more than the cost. Each box includes four to seven items you're going to love. Visit thebjjbox.com and use code JJD10 to get $10 off your very first box. And give them a follow on Instagram at thebjjbox. All of us here at the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies would like to thank the entire crew over at Flow and Roll for their tremendous support. They're renowned for their incredible t-shirt designs and they've got something for everyone. Flow and Roll quickly rose up to become the premier custom apparel provider for academies, big or small, throughout the United States. Shoot them an email about your custom order, flowenroll at gmail.com, and they'll be more than happy to get you hooked up. Check them out on Instagram at flow underscore n underscore roll for samples of their gi and no gi kits. They conveniently offer flexible payment options too. Head over to flowenroll.com for more details, and while you're there, pick up a Jujitsu Dummy signature tee, now exclusively at flowenroll.com. And remember, you'll get 20% off your online purchase of t-shirts, rash guards, or gis with code JJD. Special thanks to George Hernandez, Claims Adjuster. Have you experienced damage in your residential or commercial property in the states of Florida or Texas from flood or fire, storms, theft and vandalism, even sinkholes, just to name a few? Don't get stressed out dealing with your insurance provider. Call George Hernandez today and let the professionals get you the most compensation possible. Visit HernandezClaims.com or call 305-712-6751 to get help now. And stay in touch with them on Instagram at HernandezClaims. All right, man. That, I wasn't lying that was when I said cool. that was one of, that's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, uh, guests so far. That was no cool. No disrespect to any of our other guests. It's just like... a. He says a really well, it's nice also like on, on our on, end, too. Like, we also jived pretty I, good, yeah. Like, the whole the whole experience... I'm not doing jujitsu. Athlete, jiu-jitsu. business I'm... owner, competitor, like he's like kind of that whole yeah. package and it was great to get all those sides. And then I guess I always take the business owners. I know how hard it is not to take anything away from people that don't own businesses, but you know, there's your worker, you're owning this business and then you're competing and you're traveling. Like it's so crazy. I have a lot of respect and I, I think I take the people like, yeah. like that. And coaches know? like inherently have relationships with, with their students, you yeah. know? He's a good dude. Uh, I love it. Uh, off air, we invited him back on with his partner, Danny. Yeah. So, uh, so hopefully, hopefully in a couple future, months, we'll, yeah. well, um, either uh, we'll have them both on via Zoom or we'll we'll have them in the studio. I'm definitely so, not uh, getting into jujitsu now because I know there's a um, grandma Terminator out there. <laughs> Yeah. Who's into combat? combat Mama, Mama Freestyle. Did you look her up? No, 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 Did, you no, look no, her up? Did you look her up? Did, Did you have you have Terminator Grandma who's into combat ping pong? Okay. Oh, that's a thing. combat ping pong. <laughs> yeah. I was playing ping pong and ding ding. It's like no, any game could be know. any game could be competitive. Competitive. You, know? you you lost um, me, but it's the all game. right. Talking that was that was a long one, so we're gonna cut it short. We're gonna let everybody go. Give me your yeah. handle. You gonna let him go? Oh, it's uh, off the cliff. It's yeah. JJD. Underscore DJJ sixty nine. I'm good with it now, so I'm not going to bother you about it. Bo, you want to give me a handle? What? <laughs> it's uh, Bad Works. A. Uh, a- <laughs> <laughs> you, you think, you you think we a- have this down a- by now? Right? Son of a. You think we'd have our, it is an a- our handles? He didn't, you don't didn't finish. It's Let's a- see if, a- I, can, if I can thank everybody for listening it's, without it's, screwing it up it's today. Bad Works. B a d w e r k s. You sure? At <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the at symbols at the beginning. Yeah, I am at Uncle Milty BJJ, <laughs> and I also handle the uh, the podcast is the podcast IG and all the social media pages at Jujitsu Dummies. Check us out for all the ways to watch, listen, and support. So we appreciate you guys. All good. That Anything was great. Else? Yeah, that, that was, was awesome. good. It's- great podcast, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you to Nick. Woo. Yeah. Thank Peace. you for watching and listening. Yeah. Peace, love, Jujitsu. Us. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you I was going to still screw it up. Yeah. <laughs>